Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Matthew chapter 28. I'll read from verse 18 to 20. Jesus left us what we call and know to be the Great Commission. He started with the 11 disciples, but by extension is a mandate and is a command that is for every believer. 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power some versions use authority the word there is exousia authority all authority in heaven and in earth is given to me go ye therefore i like the account of matthew go ye therefore and teach not just go and witness go ye therefore and teach all nations baptize it them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit 20 he emphasizes again teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you all way even to the end of the world so we are given a mandate please listen everyone we are given a mandate not only to evangelize but to mentor nations to teach nations are we together part of the great commission is not just to win souls but to disciple them discipleship is a system of mentorship that causes you to conform to the life and the character of the mentor so we are mandated by god to not only evangelize like make sure that their eternal destinies are secured but to go a step further he says teaching all nations were mandated to disciple nations the word nation there does not just mean physical geographic territories alone it also means fears of influence are we together that we should take the message the life and the power of jesus to every sphere of influence and we should teach them to observe everything we have been taught he taught them certain things the secrets of the kingdom and he said take this truth to the nations teach them mentor them bring people to a point where they are not only saved but they are matured discipled are we together now it's very important to disciple nations means that certain things must be at work in your own life to qualify you to disciple nations i just wanted to start on this note number one to be able to disciple nations you must be a model a representation of god's intention for the people that means that you disciple people when you become what you want them to be are we together now yes if you want to disciple career people then you must sustain an ability to be excellent you must rise to the zenith the pinnacle 
of your career pursuit that way you become a model and a reference enough worthy to be emulated are we together if god is sending you to disciple people in ministry you must excel in a way and a manner that is both supernatural and is worthy of emulation if God is sending you to mentor people in the area of finances, you're not going to mentor them being poor and hoping to be blessed. You must become an epistle of what you want them to be. Are we together now? So discipling nations would require that we become models, epistles. We become the points of reference so that the people can have an idea. Transformation is easy when there is a reference. It's difficult to transform people if there is no reference if you want people to prosper by God you have to trust God to prosper yourself so that you become a model if you think there is an imbalance with finances for instance then become the correct model of it then it's easy for them to cut away from the imbalances are we together if you want to model the anointing removing the excesses then become it it is easy for people to become when there is a reference imagine trying to dress yourself and there is no mirror there you don't know what to adjust you don't know what to correct but when there is a mirror and better still a photo of what you are trying to look like then you will know what to adjust appropriately so you must be a model number two you must become a force and influence you will never be able to disciple nations if you are not a force are we together a force is an ability that can provoke change you must be a force a voice you must be an influence that means you must sustain the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies is god helping us If you are not a model, you are not a force, you are not an influence, then the perspectives of God communicated to you will never spread to the nation and the region that you are sent. Let me tell you this. This already means that if you love God and you truly want to see his glory fill the earth, then it is important for you to find out the area that he wants you to mentor nations in and begin to contend for results in that area for yourself that's why we came are we together now yes if god is sending you to be a pastor of pastors to teach people the proper way of building and equipping the saints you're not going to do that with a small and weak and disorganized church you yourself not obtaining results let me tell you this i have grown to respect the power of results say results it is true that the end of all arguments is results there is always room for contention when there are no results and so when the bible god speaking by jesus mandating us to disciple nations the approach we are taking now is very difficult because we seldom have the results that we propose to the people are we together so i think the better approach is to not be in a hurry to reach them but to be patient enough to have the level of result that is undeniable incontestable and you can win a nation within a day this is the strategy for as long as we continue to propose things that our lives have not captured we will find out that the people will have legitimate reasons to doubt so we are here tonight not just because of ourselves to say lord a b c this area does not have sufficient result to let people see you in and through me and i'm here in this miracle service trusting you like naman although i'm a captain of the syrian army i'm a valiant warrior but this other side step in for me is someone with me tonight all power there is a reason why he said all authority because witnessing will require authority it will require a basis for results we are not going to suggest to nations we are not going to step into systems and structures and just suggest we will need to influence the system to come in with something that works 
almost everyone here has or has used a phone and almost everyone here is not using the phone he or she is using as the first phone is that true that when the mobile devices came out and got to africa we had all kinds of models that we now consider inferior what made us leave it they didn't force you they brought out something and showed you the excellency of that new gadget and it forced you to carry your own money and go to the market and insist that although I have a 5,000 Naira phone, I have been dissatisfied because someone showed me something that the phone I have cannot browse and so it does not sustain an advantage to connect me to the world from where I am and I have someone marketed another phone and it will make me hate something I once loved results are powerful they challenge people to change their minds results can make a man change his mind it is true come see a man the woman said at the well come see a man that has told me that means she had the ability to repent it's just that everyone who met her did not have enough result to convince her most people are not rebels the level of result it takes to persuade them is absent in our lives did you hear what i just said most people are not rebels most people who don't go to church are not that hardened we have not communicated a dimension of the life the power the grace and the possibilities of the kingdom enough to make them want it and so we minister Christ from a standpoint of extreme weakness and disadvantage. It's not force enough to draw people. Is God speaking to us now? Most of your family members, let me tell you this. For many of us, it looks very difficult to reach your family members because you look at the hardness of their hearts and wonder how will I break this ground? let me tell you something if god mandated you to reach them then you need to find out lord what can convince these people enough for five thousand men aside from women and children to climb up a mountain and stay three days without worrying for what to eat the parents were not irresponsible jesus must have done something to them that even made food unnecessary and he took responsibility and said look i have to feed them because i'm sure part of the many things he taught them was the responsibility that comes when you become part of the fold of god and he said i have to prove what i just said so don't dismiss them that way and the disciples said you've put us in trouble now these people we we have wet their appetite and they expect a performance and jesus said that's all right and they got the young lad andrew brought a young boy with five loaves and two fish jesus said watch something now do you know immediately they ate it what was their response we will make you king whoever can feed us every day without begging caesar deserves to be our king no election could it be that this is why politics is hard in africa and nigeria a people came together and said jesus you must be king and jesus said i know it's because you ate bread but at least they were honest who will throw away a bread giver free to the point that 12 baskets were gathered i was once hungry now i'm so full i just look at the bread you will have to be king the same thing will happen in your family regard listen listen regardless of your all this um firstborn second boy is wonderful in terms of respect and honor but in terms of kingdom advance whoever has the ability to reveal jesus in a way and a manner that solves the needs of the people must be made king even if it is joseph the sun the moon and the 11 stars will bow they don't bow to age they bow to whoever if the sun and the moon bows then the person they are bowing to what is he that means he's neither the sun he's neither the moon he's neither the star what is the name of that person that the sun will bow to the moon will bow for 
this is the mandate of jesus it's not just to carry a truck and meet someone and harass him and while he looks at you and then you are done and you present a very miserable jesus he will ask you one question you cannot answer he said let me let me go and ask god he said but i thought he sent you either we are telling lies and just carrying out the ritual of religiosity or we truly want to disciple nations let me tell you where the carcasses are truly there the eagles work human beings have real problems they are not idiots except they don't find real answers they will inconvenience themselves to any level when men complain they are not complaining because of you they are using you to complain that there is not result enough to keep them in the days of the generals by 2 a.m for a service of six or seven people will gather there and not mind whether it is the sun or the moon or rain or whatever because they knew one encounter with these strange beings that were not like human beings their lives would change most of the people that knew the generals met them only once they didn't meet them many times but now we can be pastors over people for 10 years and nobody can reproduce our grace and you expect them to still be loyal people are not stupid my brothers and my sisters are we together disciple nations not by drumming people's faces and harassing them where the carcasses are there the eagles will gather no atm ever called your name once yet you cannot resist it when you pass and you see an atm even if you don't have money you have respect for it because of what is inside i watch people queue before something that is not a living thing and they are patient for a long time what if you are that atm that is the same way gentiles will come It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain and above every other hill listen and the nation to say come let us go let us go they were not invited they are advising themselves come let us go to the house of the lord he said there he will teach us his ways for out of zion shall proceed the law it's time for us to mentor nations with our results are we together now yes that the greatest businessman in zaria is a tongue-talking anointed christian everybody that needs him will follow him to church without invitation and sit down whether they like it or not that's how to mentor nations when you see someone who has what you are looking for rolling before god whether you know why or not you will start rolling first before you understand why he's rolling we are too weak to make jesus powerful and this is what we want to correct tonight listen let me tell you this there is nothing you can do with a man or a people that become a force when you have results real results replicable results it is impossible for a territory to deny your presence here's what jesus said teaching in what we call the beatitudes the principles of the kingdom he says you are the light of the world you are the salt of the earth he says you are a city not like a city a city that is set on a hill how can a city be on a hill men whom the earth was not worthy of a city set on a hill giving light men will light that candle and put it on top of a bush for a very long time pastors have made the church weak because they don't know what else to do when they are not saved they are the weakest in every society they are the poorest they are the whatever it is under the spirit of servitude within a territory i reject that for koinonia in the name of jesus christ that you are able to disciple and mentor nations 
God is giving us influence and granting us grace and when that influence comes people will be able to listen to you you will say the same thing now that you said five years ago and people will cry hearing you not because more anointing was added to it more result is now backing what you are saying the same thing you said before are we together now yes everything they say about you is correct until your results prove otherwise everything if they say your god is weak they are right until your results prove otherwise hearing is my father glorified 15 and verse 8 john hearing brothers and sisters let us not be hypocrites for god's sake this is how god is glorified when ye bear much fruit when ye bear much fruit when ye bear much fruit my mother and my father when your children become the best and the most influential people within a city and are madly in love with god they will influence more people within a year than you will do holding a crusade in 10 years everybody is seeking for someone to reference his life after that's why we chase after musicians that's why we go online searching for people when people show certain things that we want even if we know they are lying we still follow them if someone decides to wear rags today if you see the money he has close to the rags tomorrow you too since you don't have the money you can start with the rags at least you can tear your cloth to look like it to give you hope that you will become like him we are making nonsense marketable because there is no result to back it i vow to myself and i vow before my god that i will never be a weak representative of the kingdom by every standard as far as the territories are located for my my spiritual impact is concerned we will have to do something for god that will make god beat his chest and say truly i have sons upon the earth that's why we are here that's why we are here and many times you will think that these things are just boastful statements no when a man speaks you need to look at the force back in him if it is your ability whether intellectual physical whatever then you are wasting your time but the power of the highest mary said how shall these things be seen that i know not a man and the angel said the power of the highest will overshadow you are we together now the mandate of jesus is not more members the mandate of jesus is not a greater name for a ministry the mandate of jesus is not more people in a register the mandate of jesus is not more slaves loyal to a man called a man of god the mandate of jesus is that there will be people who understand the kingdom and love him and understand his system to be able to mentor and disciple nations your nation must look up to you otherwise you have failed if it's business if it's ministry if it's family whatever it is go and make disciples go and make disciples go and make disciples go and make disciples not go and have denominations go and make disciples that you should not give room for any unbeliever within your territory to hold a level of influence that will have to make you bend to God to receive their resources. No, sir. This is a message that the devil has fought for many years. And so many believers, especially we around the northern middle belt and part of the, we, we, we are not kingdom and we are not strategic in our understanding. We are morally sound, bless God. We love the Lord with all our heart, bless God. But we find out that our lives are empty, void of spiritual meaning because we do not know what else to do so we seek god we love him we become anointed we even fall under the anointing but to what end was that anointing given we don't know so we roam around and hope that the mundane things that we spend our lives on will give us meaning nothing else has the ability to give your life meaning than knowing that you are living your life according to purpose and that it is giving joy to the father 
in a few minutes from now we are going to be celebrating dimensions of the hand of god the miracles of god you know why we are doing this because we know that first we love the people but second it is a testament that's why it matters when unbelievers hear what god is doing when believers hear what god is doing thank god for it but the real impact is that what god is doing gets to the ears of the unbelievers because it will compel them are we together now you are gathered here tonight first because you love god he brought you but quite honestly because you are trusting god for various levels of supernatural solutions people have been here since monday tuesday wednesday families groups ministries people have traveled endured all kinds of things because someone told you or you heard it in a message that if you came here your life and your situation will change did you think they lied sit back and watch what god does with your life in a few minutes from now. So, that when you leave this place and go back as a man of god you will be surprised yourself the next time you see you will not come alone you will be too grateful to come alone when a mother comes here and sees what god does to her she will remember immediately that my stubborn neighbor's son that means they always wanted him change it's just that they had been looking for a place anointed enough to make them let me tell you i still say it again and again i thank god for posters i thank god for handbills please i'm in no way trying to demean them but nothing will cover the publicity that real power and real result creates people are too grateful rumors spread in overnight nobody paid for it and yet it goes round that's the same way the word of the Lord can come upon you ah, I came for koinonia a program called the miracle service I just strolled there and my life changed overnight madam the next one is next month I don't have money you, you better look for money and you see people run around and come and receive and so our own assignment is to continue to stay with God to make sure that everybody that comes you take a level of fire that like Queen of Sheba you say half of this was not told me if we are not doing this this is just jamboree and a ceremony and a sin and wickedness because when people pay so much price and leave wherever they come from to come and sit down and then we entertain and make all kinds of noise and jargons and they go back again with the same pain we've wasted their time and we cause the heart of the father to bleed we make miracle walk promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are we make a miracle walk a promise keep you won't believe i've not even touched what i wanted to share as the message for tonight this year your life will change in the name of jesus christ this year your life will change by the power of the holy spirit it's true let those who laugh at you laugh Ephesians chapter 3 please let me have your attention I want to share with you a powerful revelation that God put in my heart for this meeting and then we will pray mighty God we bless you Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the Bible says now unto him please look up the Lord has been pounding this scripture in my heart and I need to teach you and show you and make sure that you get it as a revelation now unto him that is able to do everybody say able to do 
exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think everybody say ask or think one more time say ask or think that means there are two ways listen carefully your petitions and requests get to God number one is through your prayer by verbalizing it number two is through your thinking your paradigm also is a prayer request it sends prayers to heaven the Bible says God will do what you ask or think not ask and think that means when you are not praying and you are thinking you are still praying before God your mouth and your mind are also prayer warriors the only thing is that for many of us our mouths are better prayer warriors than our minds most times our minds pray nonsense and that's why you find out that the things that you desire you may not see the results that are consistent with your desires because there are two prayer warriors in your life one is your mouth let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart both be acceptable that means the words of my mouth can be acceptable but the meditations of my heart can cancel everything he is able to do listen carefully exceeding abundantly far above all i ask far above all i think it matters it matters that the word of god does not just penetrate our spirits alone the word of god must have an effect listen carefully you will never be a world changer you will never be usable in the hand of god until the word of god is able to influence your understanding influence you we're talking about fruitfulness you will never be fruitful this year just because a prophetic word came as powerful as it is you can limit god your mouth may be praying because you are told to pray but your mind continues to make your destiny unfruitful listen very carefully most of the miracles that we need i submit to you most of the miracles that we need are in the realm of our understanding and the realm of the mind much more than physical miracles we need a real miracle of a reconstructed understanding to be able to know god's perspectives this is the secret of victory this is how we win in this kingdom that's why the preaching and the teaching of the word is very important because they are the spiritual systems are located for bringing understanding when the word is preached and taught generally it brings you into a comprehension it influences your understanding and when your mind listen when your mind changes then truly your life will change it's true you are not truly free until your mind is free no matter what else around you is free if your mind is under captivity then you are really in bondage are we together let me show you something a revelation that god gave me for tonight luke chapter 4 we are reading five verses luke chapter 4 we'll start from verse 14 luke chapter 4 this is jesus now luke chapter 4 and verse 14 after his time of fast and prayer the bible says and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went out a fame of him through the region round about 15. and he taught in their synagogues you see jesus was a teacher he was a teacher he wanted to give people understanding 90 percent of his ministry was teaching 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 he built the disciples by teaching the impartations happen few times most of their encounters was the teaching ministry of jesus that's how they became apostles the bible says being glorified of all 16. let me have your attention now and he came to nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up for to read he's about to read isaiah 61 now listen and there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the spirit of the lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor 
he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised just keep 18. see how many times the various issues required preaching there were three main issues in the ministry of jesus that the solution was hidden in preaching not doing preaching number one very quickly that every time you met a poor man the solution lied in doing something to his mind the bible says he had anointed me to preach not just to give to the poor he had anointed me to do something to their minds because the issue whether it is some version say meek it doesn't matter no matter how you see it it still requires preaching so when you see someone in a financial predicament god's recommendation is that that person is not yet free until the word of god is able to do something to his mind otherwise that person will remain in bondage how true bless someone who is poor in his mind a thousand times his mind would turn his life back to look like his mind when it has to do with the poor the secret to really helping them is to camp them under the wisdom of god's word and the bible says to preach the gospel to the poor the next sets of people that require preaching amazing amazing this is where the apostolic and prophetic ministry in many regards has failed woefully the next set of those who require preaching are those who are captive in need of deliverance he didn't say to conduct deliverance he said to preach deliverance that means much more than driving the spirit entity in their lives and around their situations jesus is saying they are not truly free until deliverance is preached to them listen to my teaching the mystery of deliverance i call this deliverance through transformation that your mind is reoriented again to have spiritual understanding that keeps the door closed one of the things and and i thank god that this is a ministry that believes in the whole counsel of god shortly we are going to be praying casting out devils and just taking away these influences that stand the way of people but then the bible says that the journey to deliverance will continue being a cycle a helpless cycle to the point that it becomes a mockery until the preaching dimension not the laying hands dimension not the prophecy dimension the preaching dimension there is something that must be captured in your deliverance message that affects the minds not just the spirits and the bodies of men otherwise these spirits will make a mockery of you they will leave the people and return back because their mindsets have become strongholds the spirits have created fortifications around their thinking that will allow the spirit come back again are we together to preach deliverance not just to conduct deliverance i admit to you that it is here that the apostolic and the prophetic ministry in many regards has failed because of the charismatism that is around ministering to people seeing someone fall roll under the anointing you know when that happens it looks like it's an accolade on you as the man of god and so we enjoy it no matter how many times you must go through that rigor i'm satisfied provided it helps in making me shine but the bible is saying by and large the delivery will be tired <laughs> permit me my english that person is not going to except if it's a fresh impartation and the person must know the new grace that is different from last week's falling there's a lot of mess in the body of christ demons continue to make mockery of our ignorance many people are permanent gateways for the entry and the exit of spirits it was jesus himself that carried out the demonology lecture he didn't give anybody he handled that course by himself and this is what he taught us remember when jesus talks you listen he says when a spirit leaves a man that means spirits can leave men we know that apostles and prophets we god has helped us in that area we know how to make spirits leave men 
but the bible says that spirit will go through dry regions seeking for a place of refuge are we together now and then the bible says not finding a place of refuge here's what the spirit will say remember the person had been delivered now and he's jumping in the church and he's happy hallelujah doors are opening and the spirit is saying i'm coming back the spirit is saying i will go back like the prodigal son the prodigal son said, I will arise and go back to my father. The spirit says, I will arise and go back to my house. He's calling the person who had been delivered my house. That means he's still, he's still laying claims. He comes back according to Jesus and finds the house swept, clean, but empty. Everybody say empty. Say it, empty. There is a law in the spirit that anywhere there is void, anything can fill it. When there was darkness and void, the Holy Spirit came to hover around it. Swept clean through deliverance by casting out the devil, but then empty. Because the word contents that will fill that person and close the door permanently is not there. He has not received the preaching dimension of deliverance. To let you know that now that this spirit has left you, are we together now to begin to educate you into understanding what christ has done for you and then to help you to be able to stand your ground like paul would teach in the book of ephesians supplying you all the spiritual arsenals that can keep you safe now that you are free it's not there so the spirit will route through anything anger jealousy and gladly stroll back into the person unfortunately jesus said no spirit returns alone it will gather seven others more dangerous than itself and return to the person so that the end of that person is worse than the beginning if you're with me say amen, amen. this is why there are many temporal miracles you hear people say i received a miracle a spirit left me and then i started this and then the situation gets compounded and it becomes worse again because the person does not or he has not been educated to see the relevance you see let me tell you this come the moment you cast a spirit out of a person or out or around a situation spirits are not only in people spirits are also in situations situations are bodies that spirits can possess are we together now yes so that situation or that body the spirit leaves but the individual listen carefully the individual is here standing and his mindset has not been changed has not been altered the mindset becomes a gateway that spirit enters back and continues to influence the person and when these spirits study the man of god and they know that the man of god may be well-meaning he may be very anointed but his word content is very low they no longer will be afraid even before you cast them they'll just go out and you will think it's a sign that you are getting more anointed it's a sign that they have mastered your ignorance and created a way of insulting you they will freely go and wait immediately after the grace they enter the person and continue to go so you see the labor it looks like this warfare is endless you will continue to cast out demons and demons and demons and demons forever whereas there can be victory established are you with me now that's why you can have a particular dream or series of dreams or all kinds of attacks and then you can have a strong season where there is an emphasis on the ministry or deliverance ministry or something like that and then the demons leave and afterwards the patience and the interest to allow deliverance be taught you is not there and these spirits will return they are stubborn spirits so said jesus they don't live and go away even satan left jesus for a while and came back came back through peter came back through judas until he thought he got jesus are we together the body of christ does not have the patience to allow the word of god let me tell you this if you are not teaching people you have to teach people the value of sitting to receive and to grow in the word the bible says let the word of christ dwell in you in all richness you are a man of god here please listen it is not so much about manifestation and rolling under the anointing and all of those kinds of things 
train your people to sit down and listen to the word of God and then train yourself to make sure you understand what you are teaching so that the people are not listening to what becomes poisonous to them if you're with me say amen when believers were saved in the early church they were not just left to go a few people were left without real spiritual follow-up and you saw what happened to them for instance in acts chapter 19 the bible says paul having passed through the upper coast he came and he found certain disciples supposedly and then he asked them a question he said have you received the holy ghost since he believed and they said we've not even heard whether there be any holy ghost and then he said unto what baptism then were you baptized and they said unto the baptism of john and jesus corrected them and said no the baptism of john was a baptism of repentance so that you will believe on who that will come and then they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus and paul laying his hands upon them the bible says they were filled with the holy spirit and began to pray in tongues and they prophesied they were 12 in number all of them that was a new level for them when you just back down a little you read from chapter 18 the last six verses the bible talks about a man called apollos a great man he was an eloquent man fervent in spirit mighty in scripture the bible says but he knew only the baptism of john and then one day he came for a meeting and then aquila and priscilla met him and then they expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly and then he became more useful to the body because he now began to argue based on the new light that he had you must pray and cast away ignorance the worst oppression is not demonic oppression that the spirit influences you is that when the spirit saps your desire for the word so that you do not have time and especially for women of god it's possible to be reading the bible just because of the pressure i've been ministering right from saturday back to back every day up until yesterday dash in here to come tomorrow and back again to finish the conference you can imagine over 18 sermons within one week so it's easy i can be up and doing just studying the bible as though i have an interest but it may be that it's just for the formality of finding a sermon and these spirits watch out for these kinds of things are we together you prevail as a believer when your understanding is altered by the word of god it gives you an appreciation for excellence it gives you an appreciation for diligence it gives you an appreciation for knowledge it gives you an appreciation for value you see the all surpassing excellency of god's power it will make you need the holy spirit in your life it will damage ignorance from your life and strengthen you to be effective and remember the more your spiritual capacity is the more god can flow through you and from you to others this is how to disciple nations are we together this night so give us luke chapter 4 again let me finish up and then we'll pray mighty god so the poor need the gospel preached those in need of deliverance much more than the casting of the devil they need to understand the message that the bible calls preaching deliverance and then number three look up please to preach again the acceptable year of the lord king james says the acceptable year of the lord i think it's a new living translation that says to preach the year of the lord's favor the word acceptable here there doesn't just mean the day god has agreed uh -uh. it was a direct translation but it is the lord's favor to preach the lord's favor so those in need of favor is more than just laying on of hands it's more than just prophecy receive favor there is an a spiritual education a spiritual curriculum you must pass through to really walk in favor is one of the biggest mistakes again we make in church because we teach people that favor is unmerited that favor just happens when god wants to favor you but it's not true it's not true my brothers let me tell you this it is not true favor is merited there is a dimension of favor that operates as though unmerited 
but when you truly know what favor is and how it works you know that it is merited merited there does not mean everything even your obedience is done by the grace of god supplied you don't have the power to walk in it favor is not unmerited don't insult any man of god and don't look down any man of god you hear teaching and saying is unmerited that's not what i'm teaching you you may buy into his understanding and find out that we are saying the same thing but then i can tell you this if you are under this leadership and you want results in your life understand that favor is merited i've taught you this that favor is a child that a pregnant woman gives birth to right proverbs 13 and verse 15 good understanding give it or bring it forth favor and it says the way of the transgressor is hard good understanding is like a woman proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 good understanding is like a pregnant woman she can give birth to a child and the bible names that child favor transgression is also like another pregnant woman that can give birth to a child and the name of the child is hardship hardship is predictable there is there is an exact gestation period and you give birth to something that you name unfortunately it's life that names it hardship that's the name of your child favor that's the name of your child so when you tell people favor is unmerited they just sit down and say okay so what do i do and then they just sit down and say okay god just favor me and nothing will happen most people have not tasted what the bible calls favor i've said it again and again that most of what we call favor is breakthrough favor is only favor if it is repeated if it happens just once in a while or once in a long while that's breakthrough that's not favor it's true are we together so when you need favor jesus is teaching us in the temple that you must be taught that there is something called the acceptable year of the lord ah. i know there's more that's found in you be careful be careful what becomes the foundation of your spiritual knowledge and don't be ashamed to open yourself for change many times we are loyal to our current level that even in the face of truth we would rather be loyal to where we are than sustain the flexibility to move to where we need to be i have absolute disloyalty for error i'm not ashamed when i find out that there is a need for adjustment and correction just because you held on to a, a truth or a light all your life the moment you find the truth you see your loyalty you feel like you are betraying your convictions and we will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you and i will never yell will never settle for less the same way many of us may have innocently learned that automatically demons just leave themselves out of you it may be an honest knowledge you have sustained for a long time you see that by very well-meaning men and women of God from a very sincere heart that's why knowing God is powerful you need flexibility to know God because you will know things about him that will it will be like deliverance from a cult now how do I come out of this knowing that all my life this is what I believed in I shared with you a story years ago about a gentleman fine smart man of god who for a long time held the view that look it was impossible demons cannot influence people etc etc and he held on to that and he was a very sincere person lovely fine nice gentleman 
and i remember when he came to see me in my room then as soon as i saw him i saw a spirit standing behind him that came with him and then i was i was trying to look for the most loving way to just tell him my brother you may need prayer no 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 no. i don't need anything i'm okay i'm all right i'm fine i'm this i said i understand i'm not about to argue with you but please this is what no 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 no. this person came for counseling something is obviously wrong with his life and now i'm seeing that this is what is wrong and the gentleman will just not agree and then i pleaded with him to give me a chance to pray for him and this guy would get up like 15 minutes later shouting and manifesting and talking on all kinds of things and then when i was done he got up i didn't look down on him i politely appreciated him for more than three days this gentleman could not be himself he went back according to him and carried his bible he kept sending me text messages apostle so what is the meaning of this now i believe this i believe that do you cry when you buy a better phone do you feel bad when you be buy a better phone? Don't be ashamed when you are open to truth that is new, but truth it is. Just because it's not something that has been captured in your experience. That's why you must have meekness and flexibility. The goal is not to create argument and to, no, 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 no. If I find out that what I believe now is wrong, I will be glad to repent and find out what the truth is and in all honesty come and tell you i apologize i've seen better now i will not be ashamed to say it but my brothers and my sisters let me tell you god has granted us the grace to prove some things and these things we teach are not suggestions are we together yes. favor will not come upon you just because you want it the gospel must be preached you must sit down and you must be taught the systems that activate favor and then when the teaching comes there is an empowerment is usually light and grace light grace light grace full of grace and truth 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 that's how it works when the truth comes upon you then the level of grace to demonstrate that dimension you have had is given to you is someone learning tonight i'm saying this because most of us are in these three categories tonight trusting god you came for a miracle service because you are tired of all the things that have happened around your life and are happening some of us have come because we are trusting lord can you look down on me with favor and i'm showing you jesus himself teaching at the temple that's why they marveled at him 20 let's look at verse 20 20 of luke chapter 4 we're praying shortly luke i'm 20 now i'm 20 let's look at verse 20 and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister so there was a man of god there before him and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him 21 let me add 21 and he began to say unto them these days this scripture fulfilled in your ears when you read down the bible says they marveled at him saying what what doctrine is this is this not joseph's son where did he learn this one from now you must know something new to rise to a new level what you know has brought you where you are and if you stay there you will continue to recycle your results you must contend for light and glory and truth that's why i sang that song and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you. i told you for many years demons used to oppress me remember my story as a man of god I went to many people sincerely let me tell you this by God's grace I tell you this I'm a student of knowledge there are few people that study and read like me I say it with all humility and so I read lots of books that propose so many things and I walked in those things yet these spirits would not leave me as a man of God they would oppress me I would go to bed and they would oppress me sometimes even in the midst of fasting like it's happening to many of you I will round up the fast as I'm rounding up the fast the same experience will happen again I said what I mean what is this is will it be honest that I don't have faith 
eventually i found out what was wrong and god helped me in that area and that's why i continue to trust god to help people in these areas may god may god grant you the grace to prove what you know Amen. not just to say what you know this is a prayer you will appreciate in the nearest future may god grant you the grace to prove what you know Amen. because the end of all argument truly is results consistent results are proof that mastery has been gained are we together and tonight the lord wants to visit us like benga shared is a buffet a buffet of fat things he has set the table before us for yours it may not be that there's an infirmity you are trusting god for but there is a level of favor listen god has declared by his spirit that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness genesis 17 and verse 6 and i will make you exceeding fruitful he says and nations shall come out of you and kings out of your loins one of the keys i taught you that sponsor extraordinary fruitfulness is the favor of god this one everybody must cry it and you must receive it if every miracle service is dedicated to releasing favor it will be worth it because let me tell you my brothers and my sisters happy is a man whose jealousy the, the, when the jealousy of God zooms on you, you become a fearful wonder, even to yourself. It's true. It's true. You stand back and watch in shock and wonder and say, God, what are you doing? It's not unmerited. It is empowered, but not unmerited. There is an active contribution through knowledge and faith that brings it. And tonight i believe that in the name of jesus christ within the few minutes we have a very quick work to do tonight there are many of us seated here the truth is that there are spirits around your life and behind the situations of your life and it does not matter trust god that they will leave you there are others your miracle service began while i was teaching because now you are gaining understanding so this is why these things continue to be repeated in my life but there are others the mountain that stands before you is a mountain of complete disfavor if in three days no one helps you something is wrong the favor of god is not on you 72 hours is too much for heaven to not respond to you forgive me if this sounds arrogant you will know it's true I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come to you. I will come to you. You get up in the morning, Lord, thank you. And there's all kinds of favor daily loading you with benefits. And I'm not just talking finance. Finance is not the only expression of favor. It's a needed one, but not the only expression of favor. When God lifts men to make your life easy, you are trusting God for a new dimension in the spirit. Someone goes out of his way and gets a book by an author you do not know and comes to give you and that book is teaching on the anointing in a way you have never seen that's favor it doesn't always have to be money when we say favor people think money you are trusting god for a realm of the prophetic and then god grants you access to a man of god you never would have had access to and one impartation brings you into that realm it is favor the absence of hardship is the proof of favor Let me sing this song again before we pray. Don't join me. Listen. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Favor found in Him. New levels of grace found in Him. 
that you step into a meeting as a man of God and you know that principalities and powers yokes thrones dominions are about to be subdued it's not a suggestion you are not guessing you are standing from a pinnacle of light and no power in existence will sustain the ability to negate God's word upon your life a dear man of God I met you know while I was ministering great wonderful man just yesterday I met with him and he said apostle after a meeting and he said sir I've been trying to get a name for my company for weeks and for months I'm a man of God and I've been praying and I laughed because when something is within your power you see that within your power given to you by grace the same way a little child comes to say please give me pure water and you can bring out five naira because it's within your power there are some things after tonight it will be within your power it's true. within your power to speak and change things within your power and I told him I said let's pray I said this night you will have the answer and by evening he calls me and says apostle I almost cannot believe this even as a man of God that I was sitting down and this is the name this is that and I told him congratulations and he said what is this and I told him that this is called the power of God the power of God is a force it produces changes the same way you are sitting quietly now your life is at the mercy of an anointing and within few minutes my brothers and my sisters I I, I never I never cease to marvel at what the anointing can do just like that just like in a twinkling of an eye and someone's burden has lifted for decades like that in in a moment and you're waiting for days in Zaria will be worth it completely just like that please believe this if a worker in this ministry believe it don't get used to these things and allow people who come from somewhere to continue to receive and you sit down and say wow i know no let's not cheat ourselves let's be sincere god is able to do let me tell you it is within his power to surprise you tonight not just to give you miracles to surprise you it is within his power to begin to alter systems and structures this night not tomorrow this night this night the bible says every man should minister according to the measure of the grace of god given to you when you measure outside of the jurisdiction of the grace supplied it's called pride elijah said let him come naman elisha so that he will know not that there is a god in israel that there is a prophet in israel you would call that pride but the result showed it the same way you are a man of god now and in a few minutes if you are a man of god and you came here i want you to just get ready because what will come on your life it will lift you to a pedestal in the spirit that will surprise you you will walk in strange levels of glory this is by the spirit are you hearing what i'm saying now we're about to pray blessed be the name of the lord results are not acts of pride and arrogance they are acts of the grace and the mercy of god activated through knowledge so god takes you to a new dimension we are going to do a very we will trust god for a very quick walk i took out time to teach tonight because this is the real miracle the performance all of that is it, just a touch and all of that and one prophetic word but what you are hearing now is it this alteration that is happening not just to your spirit but to your mind find out how many impartation services jesus conducted you will be surprised there were few times one of which he breathed upon them received the holy ghost but most times he camped with them for 40 days all he was doing was to teach 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 but do you not know that in the light that comes from his hand is the hiding place of his power the power of god flows through his word so when the word of god is coming now you are immersed in his glory you see that and the spirit entered me not just when he laid hands on me when he spake unto me 
I've taught you how the word of God works. That the word of God is like a tray. It's carrying something. You don't receive it just for the word's sake. You receive it for what is on it. If, if I'm hungry and you serve me jollof rice, you bring it on a tray. Is that true? The first thing I receive is the tray. I receive the tray with joy, not because I need the tray. I need the rice. The word of God is a conveyor of the possibilities of God. So when the word of God comes to you, you are happy because of what is in it and on it. He sent forth his word. He sent forth his word. His word of deliverance. His word of, of healing. His word of lifting. Have you heard this proverb that in one day a nation can be born? It says, but as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. That means it's possible tonight that before the meeting is over, your phone can beep and you will see something that will keep you on your knees. And say, Lord, you just answered my prayer of five years in one day. How shall these things be? That's the voice of unbelief. We're talking God here. We're not talking a man. God. No wonder they said, Lord, I believe. But if what I call faith is nonsense, help thou my own belief. I need help. And Jesus helped him. Men of God, let's trust God for this miracle service to bring us into new realms of glory. Let's trust God. Let's trust God. The path of the just is as a shining light. It shines ever brighter spiritually financially in grace in influence the path of the just shines shines don't allow people threaten you with their ignorance when people are ignorant they rub their ignorance on you and make you guilty for opening yourself up to all the dimensions of god as though you are sinning so if you open up yourself to be blessed financially they they give a body language that suggests that you too you are joining them in this thing receive the whole counsel of god it is beneficial for all of God to be seen in your life you embrace the power of God and hate his resources the pain that is on your child will tell on you and it will destroy your life I receive the whole counsel of God I receive the whole counsel if there is wealth I receive it if there is wisdom I receive it if there is grace I receive it everything that is on this table sometimes you can be served a buffet and sometimes they can even help you to serve it and you say little of everything little of what everything and we will never see. now you join me we know there's more that's found in you Sing it from the depth of your heart. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more than found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more than found in you. Just one prayer point tonight. Lord, my heart and my mind and my body is open to receive everything everything go ahead and pray everything oh god you're trusting god for a healing miracle now is the time to release your faith you're trusting god for deliverance from all kinds of oppression now is the time to believe you're trusting god for a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit believe it for it you're trusting god for a change of results lord thank you i have evidences in my life but i need a higher level of results Lord, thank you for the prayer dimension, but I need a heavier grace, the spirit of prayer and supplication. Amplify the gift of God in me. Amplify the grace of God in me. 
outside the supply of the spirit upon my life. I need to disciple nations. I need to become an influence over a system, over a structure for the sake of your glory. Pray, pray. Pray, Lord, I need a visitation upon my family. How forcible are right words? How forcible are right words? There is a compelling power that right words bring. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to do it this way. We have to hurry up. We're just going to do four things this night. Number one, there will be a session of prophetic deliverance. I'll tell you what that means. I'll pray for people. I'll minister. But there are times that I'll just speak the word, the case, and then God will deal with that. Number two, I, I, if we have the time, the Lord may speak to one or two people. And then number three, we'll take time and minister the healing power of God to the sick. It's very important and then number four we'll have the time to pray on our requests and then i prophesy and speak over everyone and that will be it for the night the, the, that time will come with impartations and all of that i say this to you especially for those of you who are coming for the first time so that your heart can be open it's going to be a flow all through and i want you to participate with your heart let your heart be open by the way you can stand in for your loved ones and then those connecting online from whatever nation of the world there's no distance truly in the spirit. You can receive, you can believe, and then God can make this true in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is a grace that I found myself releasing upon the body of Christ in this season, and that's what we're going to start with. The Lord, I don't know, God has been doing something in my life since January this year started. Is the grace for speed. This is what I want to release upon our lives all through my meetings in lagos for every meeting the lord has instructed me to release that grace listen no matter how many times you've heard me pray it i like for your heart to be open there is real speed that can come upon the saints in this season that you will run just just run like elijah are we together now i want to i, I want to talk to you especially for those outside the ushers will only do their best but they are limited usually when i pray this prayer and i release this grace you will find people running physically by the spirit of god there's nothing strange about it this is an operation of the spirit and i want to pray that grace right now from the depth of my heart you see that most of what we need in our lives is speed you will not complain about delay again when you have speed because it will not make any difference god has a system of forcing you to catch up and i want to pray those who are coming here for the first time let this be the first miracle that you receive in the mighty name of jesus now i stretch my hands at the count of three i declare the grace for speed i'm seeing fire coming on the feet of people at the count of three i release that anointing in all the overflows right now one my god two three receive that grace right now Receive that anointing everywhere, inside and outside. I release that grace, that grace for speed. Life comes to you and you begin to run to overtake the chariots of Ahab. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release speed, speed, inside, outside. I release speed. People are receiving that grace. Strange speed, speed in ministry speed in your career receive it god is releasing it upon you no more delays no more delays by the spirit of the living god no more delays online offline localized here yeah. i stretch my hands and i prophesy that grace right now people will begin to run by the spirit i'm seeing it in the spirit and energizing of the spirit is coming on men and women speed speed i prophesy speed 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 outside overflow one 
overflow two, overflow three, by the roadside, speed for you and for your family members. By this grace, I crush delay. I crush delay. I crush delay. I crush delay. I crush stagnation. Remaining in one position. I judge the spirit and the force behind it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is telling me he's still releasing that grace. But now over families not just individuals you as a person may be moving forward but your family is under a strong yoke of stagnation i stretch my hands right now at the count of three may god use you as a point of contact to supply speed to your family members are you ready one two three receive that grace families families speed speed to the north speed to the south speed to the east speed to the west in the name of jesus speed to the middle belt i release you i release you i release you Kabakato shalikata speed in the name of jesus i cause every power i cause every force by this grace and by this unction i release speed The Lord is showing me a purple robe. I'm seeing a purple robe in the spirit and I'm seeing it come on people. Not everybody, but there are specific people. And I believe purple in, in, in scripture is symbolic of royalty. It is a system of enthronement that is coming on certain people. Lord, I don't know where these people are. They came from miracle service, but I stretch my hands. May the anointing locate such people now and shift you into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace. Receive that grace. Men robed in royalty, beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Beauty for ashes. for ashes beauty for ashes pay attention to what God is doing beauty for ashes hallelujah I'm seeing in a vision of the Lord and I'm seeing people the right legs being tied with something that looks like looks like a like a bag but tied and i'm seeing on it reproach that's what the lord is seeing reproach and the lord wants to take away that luggage of reproach it may not be for everybody but in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god that everything that represents a reproach in your life tonight here and now i release by the supply of the spirit the grace and i cause that reproach now I cause that reproach now. I cause that reproach now. I cause that reproach now. My God, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus, man of God, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ, businessman, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a grace for biological fruitfulness like physical I'm not not just maybe financial and all of that real to, to dislodge barrenness whether it is for you or it's for someone connected to you it's time to receive it now I'm seeing the Lord is leading me to stand here just this room and I'm seeing an anointing locating people right here and taking away that yoke of barrenness. I stretch my hands. 
whether it is for you or your family members i'm just doing what the lord is asking me to do in the name of jesus may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now that if there is anyone within this road among those standing that is suffering any kind of barrenness i come against it right now i declare become a joyful mother of children a joyful father a joyful mother a joyful father a joyful mother a joyful father in the name of jesus christ The Lord is asking me to do something serious here. Now, this is an apostolic ministry and we are word-based. So whatever it is you do not understand, you rest in the fact that we work consistent with the Lord. Um, what, what God, I hope that you don't find it offensive. God is asking me to remove some money and just hold it and speak and release a grace for financial rest over people. This is an instruction that's why i'm taking out time to explain so you don't misunderstand me you will be surprised to see what happens i will not ordinarily do that no we we represent we are people of integrity and this is not some superstitious manipulative thing but we are in a season of fruitfulness and god is giving me an instruction so i'm just going to do exactly what god is asking me to do just to be able to hold something and release that grace and that you have the grace to receive you'll be surprised to see what happens father i've obeyed you in charge like foolishness I stretch my hands right now let this mantle and this unction Lord let it rest on your people at the count of four that in a way you will shift them to such dimensions of supernatural supplies get ready now one two three four receive that fire right now step into that level of strange abundance in the name of Jesus Christ I place a grace upon your life. You may look weak, but in the name of Jesus, let there be supplies from heaven. Let there be supplies from heaven. Let there be supplies from heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I provoke over your life the grace for strange financial supplies. Don't say you don't need it. 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 In the name of Jesus, let it give you rest to serve the Lord. Let it give you the fortitude to stop begging in the name of Jesus. And it will allow you to concentrate on the matters of the kingdom and of destiny. I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Financial dimensions, it is first spiritual before physical. Listen to me, it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Let your faith come alive. There are people entering dimensions and levels of grace and supplies and possibilities. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. Don't come dropping seeds out of ignorance or pressure. Please, please. I'm praying from my heart. If you don't know what you are doing, please don't feel guilty and don't feel under any kind of pressure whatsoever. Are we together? Let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. When God begins to speak over your life in an area, it's because he has seen what is going to befall men. And like an ark, he's creating an ark of gopher wood that represents safety. Many people in this year will languish financially. I'm telling you this. Listen, there will be a lot of cries. That's why God is releasing this grace. There will be more people backsliding 
as a result of lack of resources than just a demonic attack please again i plead with you i plead with you in the name of jesus do not be under any pressure listen they did not keep a basket here for you to come and keep money i'm, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so i'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so we are committed to helping you experience god we're not playing games with anyone's destiny but i'm saying it again that there are people entering strange realms this is more than a miracle alert this is not miracle alert this is a realm is a is a dimension in the spirit and in the name of jesus i stand by this anointing again and i shift you step in step in step in step in step into this realm of surprise step into this realm of grace for your family for your family for your destiny step into this realm of grace it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found me it's in you lord it's in you lord I know there's more that's found me And we will never say We'll never settle for less We know there's more that's found in you Hallelujah I'm seeing a woman outside The Lord is showing me a woman outside The power of God is coming upon that woman right now outside. I'm seeing that this is a woman of many sorrows. Her name is not given to me. But I'm seeing that this is a woman outside with all kinds of first financial issues and then family issues and anointing. A very strong anointing will come upon that woman. And the Lord is telling me that he's bringing upon people the spirit of revelation. Is, is a dimension of grace I want to pray that prayer right now father in the name of Jesus Christ I don't know who they are I don't know where they are but I stretch my hands I'm seeing fire like rings of fire just coming upon the eyes of people I release that grace right now help them please I release that grace right now blessed are you O Lord our God Blessed are you, O Lord, and it is holy. Something is coming on you. But I can't do that. I wish the more come, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the sea. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to go. But I can't deny my heart. I'm seeing like a letter and I'm seeing congratulations on it and the Lord is telling me it's a grace for jobs it's a grace for jobs please believe now it's a grace there are people who have been praying it and the Lord is asking me to count five just the, the number five and a grace will come for some you are already walking but God will lift you like the stars rising one two three four five receive that grace right now in the name of jesus i release that grace supernatural testimonies supernatural testimonies of jobs in the name of jesus supernatural testimonies for you and for your loved ones i don't care where the job must come from but i decree and i prophesy these jobs come to you speedily in the name of jesus christ
Aleluya. My hands are shaking. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. I'm stretching my hands. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. There are people that need to step into the healing ministry. The healing anointing. Right now I release that place. The healing anointing. Makato Sedekata. You can't be a man of God without the healing grace. The healing anointing. Receive it from ministry. Receive it from ministry. The healing anointing. Outside overflow one. I'm seeing the angels of the Lord. There are impartations of the healing grace. The healing grace. The healing grace. anointing receive it you need it in the name of jesus so you can take the healing power of jesus to the nation in the name of jesus christ you are carrying that grace bodily you are carrying that grace Evidential grace for you. Hallelujah. Now I'm ready to minister deliverance. For those people, you bring them out now. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. Lift your hands. We are going to pray. We are going to read. These spirits, there are forces that stand the destinies of people. Listen, please, especially if this is your first time coming. Ah, I'm seeing fire, fire from ground up, fire from ground that's from your feet rising up. I'm going to count three listen for those people please i want them out here there is a strong fire of deliverance that is going to come upon you and clear the way for you to experience open doors and victory are you ready now please i want you to believe it at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus it's not a ritual and let me have all the people here ushers thank you father every devil of darkness that followed anyone here any family any situation here in the name of jesus it's time for them to come out of their hiding place i decree and i prophesy that at the count of three as you shout jesus may the fire of god bring a separation between you and those influences one get ready two three shout jesus come out of them now I cast every devil in the name of Jesus and they shall cast out devils I command the spirit influences behind situations behind circumstances I command in the name of Jesus that they come out of their hiding place in the name of Jesus bring them out spirits of ancestry territorial ordinances that keep men in the same position that refuse to let them rise i come against you in the name of jesus bring them out in the name of jesus i'm seeing a sword and i know that sword is the word of god i cast by that sword let there be a separation that every force tying anyone's destiny you're going to shout Jesus again at the count of three. Be ye lifted, all ye ancient gods. One, two, three. Go back up, shake it, 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 shake it. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Release their destinies.
covenant keeping God. Yahweh, covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh. Hallelujah. These hands that I see tied in the realm of the spirit, many of you will feel physical fire on your hands. There will be a strange deliverance. That's why anything you do does not work. No matter if it's a business, it will fail. If it's a relationship, it will fail. Anything you lay your hands, there is a spirit that steals your joy. But right now, I challenge and I attack that spirit. Let the fire of God, right now at the count of three, separate you from that influence. One, two, three. Let them go now, 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 in the name of Jesus. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind Spirit of victory Cover us with your wind yeah. The yoke of bad luck, the yoke of bad luck, the yoke of bad luck, I break it now. The yoke of bad luck, receive, I'm breaking someone free from this yoke of bad luck. I break you free from the yoke of Bango in the name of Jesus. Bad luck. It works well for others until you come. And then something strange just happens. All those under the anointing here i arrest this spirit and at the count of three every devil you will patch your load and every trouble you have brought to these destinies and go i speak as one sent by the anointing at the count of three leave one two three go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies in the mighty name of jesus christ Who is Janet? Janet. Janet. I hear a name Janet. Janet. There's, there's no time we have Janet please don't enjoy anybody are you Janet stand up I had the name Janet please don't tell lies don't embarrass yourself if you are not Janet go back Janet where are you from In the name of Jesus, look at me. I will pray for everybody, but I will pray for you. Huh? Look at me, look at me. Don't close your eyes. Your family is under serious attack. Huh? Where are they? Where are your family members? They're in Zaria. Zaria, yes. Go and tell them 
that the Lord is bringing deliverance for your entire Amen. family. Amen. Huh? Not only... Go and tell your family members that the Lord is taking away the reproach Amen. from your family. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I may not be able to talk to everyone, but... I'm still seeing that thing I saw in the vision. That thing tied on the legs, written reproach, reproach, reproach. And the Lord is taking it away right now. In the name of Jesus, taking away reproach. This lady, tap that lady holding her hands for me. This, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I'm seeing like oil come upon you. And God is saying he's shifting you to a new level of favor in the name of Jesus I decree and I prophesy by the spirit over you 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 all of you standing here for time's sake I'm going to pray for you one of you um, the power of God is going to come on one of you the moment that happens I'll pray for everybody I'm seeing one person one of you the Lord is telling me that the anointing is coming on that person. Not only is God bringing personal spiritual revival to you, God is opening doors of opportunity. Lord, where is that one person? I decree and declare when that one person is identified and then I just pray for all of you in general. I'm seeing someone in around the media where media people are and the Lord is saying you are stepping into your season of laughter. And just around that vicinity of the media I stretch my hands may the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus like a mighty rushing wind rest upon the individuals within that vicinity in the name of Jesus that person must enter into the, the reality of this prophecy I'm back to you people in front in Jesus name I decree and declare whoever that one person is may that anointing and that grace come upon you you will never 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 be the same the power of God will come upon that one person the moment that happens then I'll pray for everybody it's just the instruction God is giving me in the name that is above all names I stretch my hands towards all of you by faith and in the spirit I declare for whatever reason it is that God brought you out here I declare I place the word of God upon your situation and in the name of Jesus I declare that you return with testimonies in the name of Jesus my dear look at me this lady wearing dark come god bless you you can go back to your seat all of you hold my hands hold it with both of your hands where are you coming from asaba. from asaba yes, the lord is saying i should tell you that this will be the beginning of your days of glory Amen. Oh, this will be the beginning of your days of glory step into it by the spirit in the name of jesus you will never be the same never be the same we raise your banner we shine your light so we see ladies every spirit that appears to you in dreams sleeping with you in dreams and destroying your destiny anything good that is about i'm praying for everybody but i'm hearing ladies in my spirit to deliver ladies from this spirit good things are about to happen to you and then you have a dream and all kinds of spirits molest you and that's it i'm praying i'm seeing 23 there are more than this but particularly 23 people the lord is bringing strange deliverance for them right now wherever they are in the name of jesus may the fire of the holy spirit from inside this auditorium to the overflows outside online let there be complete emancipation for such people in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ
my dear this lady wearing pink lift your hands look at me shout Jesus as loud as you can I'm seeing the Lord take something out of your body we're about to pray for the sick but the Lord is taking something out of your body that's why I told you to shout that name in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the power of infirmity is broken over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ now very quickly our time is gone we are going to be very very fast are we together um, if you are trusting God listen carefully whether you are in overflow one overflow two overflow three if what you have please listen if what you have is a terminal disease a terminal disease is something that is akin to a death sentence are we together like a death sentence you know what I mean I don't have to mention names please whether you're in overflow one two three be fair be honest I will want to minister by myself to you now number two those in here you can come out and you're trusting God for healing for you or for your loved ones overflow one please to your projector stand overflow two same thing to your projector stand overflow three to your projector stand so if you do not belong to this category that I particularly requested to come, please, God is here. Make sure you are sincere. Make sure you are honest. I'd like all of you to come stand. I'm about to minister. And there will be men and women of God scattered across. Those by the roadside, I don't know what overflow that will be. Let's say an extension, overflow four. You will join overflow two. And then there will be men of God ministering by the Spirit. Please, because of time, you do not just a touch is enough we're functioning together under a corporate anointing so you don't have to particularly except if they have a personal prophetic word for you you don't have to just waylay them and harass them and say look this and that and that just stand by faith as soon as they pray for you you go back to your seat you check yourself you must return with your testimony if it's a medical report whatever it is i like you to just come believing hallelujah praise the Lord in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that together as a team under the anointing of the Holy Spirit overflow one overflow two overflow three and those online we agree that this touch becomes a touch that will birth your miracle and your testimony in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now as as we pray for you worship team please help us whilst we are doing that how many of you have your prayer requests you have your prayer request please wave it so while this is happening usher's pr department please join them uh and then if, if if there's a need for that maybe the protocol department can help let's collate the prayer requests very quickly so that we can speak over it immediately we'll be very fast please um dear people of god let's be very fast as we minister to them so that we can um finish up on time blessed be the name of the lord for those of you standing here i want you to believe there is a god in heaven and that this touch becomes a supernatural touch doesn't matter what the situation is release your faith in jesus name god bless you um i'll just just stand on them because of time please if you are yet to submit your prayer request it's not a ritual you can wave it and an usher or someone will quickly please if you're under the anointing, you can wave it or tell them where it is and they'll pick it for you. Please, quickly, quickly. Those online connect by faith. Stretch your hands here and let's pray. Father, we decree and we declare. We just have a minute for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands and prophesy. Libra Skadabrando Shari Katosia Brada. The same way we are standing on this request in the name of Jesus. This is establishing your dominion above every challenge, above every situation in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we decree by the power of the Holy Spirit. Every impossible situation here, we turn it around right now in the name of Jesus. We turn it around, believe, believe, believe. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. 
we turn it around in the name of Jesus we turn it around in the name of Jesus we turn it around in the name of Jesus this is a strategy that the Lord delivered to us a representation of your pain your stress that which attempts to challenge God over your life no matter how many times we prophesy we are limited and this is an opportunity to have everyone it's like tabling your heart before God there is a God that answers prayers this is not a ritual that's why we bring it before him and let me tell you we have we have heard of marvelous testimonies from this and I believe that in this year of extraordinary fruitfulness that this that you have dropped here before the Lord in the name of Jesus as you have brought it before him it will never if it's a tragic situation it will never return to you again and if it is a request that must appear in your life then I decree and declare I don't know how it will happen like the prophet said you may not see wind you may not see rain yet the valley shall be filled with water I prophesy I decree and declare in the name that is above all names by the God of all grace your answer will find its way to your life even if it means happening through your enemy or happening to a man that has vowed not to help you may my God make it happen for you in the name of Jesus Christ and I prophesy to you that these Egyptians you see today that you see them no more forever you see them no more forever you see them no more forever in the name of Jesus Christ for many of you even before this month is over in the name of Jesus you will tick your list one by one one by one one by one one by one in the name of Jesus we decree it so by the power of the Holy Spirit we decree it so by the blood of the Lamb we decree it so by the Word of God we establish it it is done in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for you now this will be um, the first time we're doing this in a miracle service for the year why do I round up the services with a prophetic word because I believe in the power of prophecy and it is also a spiritual mechanism to send the word to you wherever you are are we together now you don't have to be called as an individual the word of God comes is yours for you to receive and then you see the creative potentials in that word people's lives have changed some overnight just because a word came and now it's about to come again let me tell you do you know that I listen to the miracle service messages myself and I receive all the prayers from the man of God just because I'm the vessel being used by God does not exempt me from receiving too I listen to the messages and God is my witness I follow every prayer with all my heart sincerely are we together now so believe this and you will see it work in your life it is only what you believe that will work are we together favor like never before in the name of Jesus beginning from this night may he follow you like a shadow follows a man I say it again favor like never before from tonight may he follow you in the name of Jesus Christ strange favor strange favor activating possibilities in your life strange favor in the name of Jesus Christ number two I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit every overdue issue in your life an issue that has stayed long beyond necessary in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that this is the season of strange settlement over your life May my God, the God of all grace, establish and settle you in every area. In the name of Jesus Christ, every long-standing issue comes to an end now. Everything that misrepresents you before your helpers, 
the spirit that creates a bad image in the presence of those who can help and lift you there is such an operation of darkness that when men desire to help you something happens around your life in the name of jesus it comes to an end now in the name of jesus it comes to an end now i pray for you in in this season you need wisdom not sophia not the wisdom of men not the princes of this world but the wisdom that comes from above that is accompanied with mighty works it says i will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that none of your adversary can gain say nor resist i decree and declare receive this strange order of wisdom receive this supernatural dimension of wisdom in the name of jesus christ the level of anointing that you must be upgraded to in this season so that the hand of god will be evident on your life i stretch my hands let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now if you are a ministry let there be a baptism of that anointing now for every leader here let there be a baptism of that anointing now everyone due for promotion your place of work or your standing in for your your loved ones i decree and declare we announce and we establish their rising in the mighty name of jesus christ the spirit that continues to minister to you that you will die and that you will not see the end of this year you will die during election you will die during this and that a crisis will happen and you'll be a victim of this i silence the voice of that spirit now i decree and declare whether by road whether by air whether through the operation of the wickedness in men remain ever exempted from death in the name of jesus may you be too late for tragedy if it will cause shame you will not be found there if it will cause pain you will not be found there in the name of jesus christ i decree that whatever it is you're involved with whether it's your career the works of your hands your business whatever it is that god uses as a channel to increase your influence to bless people and to empower you in the name of jesus may grace be multiplied upon it in the name of jesus may grace be multiplied upon it in the name of jesus may grace be multiplied upon it some of you at the beginning of the year your prayer life is already down it's too early your word life already down no appetite to study scripture no appetite to pray whether you sleep by eight o'clock or by ten you will still wake up by eight the next day this one is a spirit it's no longer tiredness anything you don't have control over has been hijacked over by satan god gives his beloved sleep it is true but slumber is of the devil there is a difference between slumber and sleep one of the differences is control there are some of us even if you sleep by two in the afternoon you will wake up by eight or nine the next day until good things finish before you wake up it's a spirit i curse it from your life now. you will go to bed when you want to and you will wake up when you need to in the name of jesus christ god has declared over us but let me declare again over our finances please i will continue to see this they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo I decree and declare this is the season that you step into overflow in the name of Jesus Christ 
no one connected to this grace no one connected to this vision goes down financially and i pray for you those of us who have little groups ministries fellowships that were helping and building other believers and for a long time you have seen that it's like your grace is pecked at a level nothing new nothing fresh i decree after this miracle service step into a new order of spiritual operation whatever needs to be restored in your life before february restoration restoration to bring back i command it to your life now in the name of jesus anywhere we are not praying for crisis during this election but in the name of jesus any pocket of reprisal or whatever that will arise by the finger of god may you be far from that environment may your children be far from that environment may your parents and your loved ones be far from that environment whatever it is that you have asked the lord that i have not mentioned here but is a desperate desire in your heart i release my faith with you as touching the grace given unto me in the name of jesus let it be turned to your testimony two more prayer points may the spiritual fire on your altar the fire that once called people to you the fire that was responsible for your honor the fire that was responsible for your influence whatever made that fire go down or blew it out in the name of jesus we find your coals back to flames hallelujah please listen listen to me listen to me greatness is what you attract to your life by reason of what you are becoming more than by reason of what you have your results a reflection of the transitions happening in your life or otherwise it is cheaper to change yourself than to change things because when you change things must change everything in your life is a statement to your destiny this is where you are in the spirit this is where you are in knowledge this is where you are in destiny instead of shifting things one by one shift yourself and everything will rise to follow you you truly change things by changing you don't change things it's harder to change things one by one everything you draw to your life is a reflection of what version of you when you change your results change when you change even the operation of the spirit over your life changes he does not relate with everybody the same way at every dimension no hallelujah it's important we pray the biblical way to deal with weakness is to pray you pray out a weak version of yourself if you fail in the day of battle he say your strength is small hallelujah praise the lord please be seated god bless you be seated and be sensitive please play the strings for me mighty god
give you praise. Good evening, everybody. It's my goal and my prayer and my desire that every service becomes an experience for someone's life, an experience for someone's destiny. We've been doing this for many years, but we will never take for granted the opportunity that God gives for our growth and our transition. Every service is prepared intentionally, not only to bless, not just to honor the continuity of a ministry's program, but it's an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to come once again and to change our lives. And among the things we must rebuke is familiarity. You must rebuke familiarity. I know how God works. I know how God moves. I know somebody is about to shout. I know somebody will roll as usual. This is what you expect in Koinonia. That familiarity will turn you from a partaker to a spectator. You can be in a place, be a witness, a spectator, and not a partaker. It takes more than just looking around to be a partaker. It takes a heart connection, an awareness that one moment in God's presence, effectively maximized, can turn a man's life around. People say one word from God can change a man. No. One word from God does not change a man. One word from God received, understood, and engaged is what will change a man. One word from God to change a man is deception. The devil has never been afraid of the word of God. When the sower sowed, it was Satan himself that came and carried the seed. One word received with meekness, the Bible says, the engrafted word. Praise the Lord. I came tonight with a very serious burden. Um, and many times when the Lord wants you to teach teachings that are very very seasonal and very called for especially as the times demand he will bring them not as sermons he will bring them as burdens it will be a strong burden upon your spirit that will refuse to leave praise the lord and um i've been focusing a lot especially about what i just talked about the power of changing things by changing the power of growing to superior realms of results by being the one to grow I think that sometimes we pay so much attention on the things around us we desire changed that we forget that those things are there because of us that means that if I refuse to transit in life no matter what I try to move, it will come down back to my level. Are we together now? There are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray for yourself. Let me repeat. There are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray on and for yourself. That means if you become the project of the growth, there are many things you may not need to pray for again. It's true. In praying for yourself, you will find out that you are praying for many other things. Your prayer life and indeed your destiny will be hard if you focus on any other thing outside yourself. Pay attention to yourself, the development, your transition, and then you will find out that in doing so, you are automatically influencing every result you desire. Let me repeat what I said earlier on while we're praying that greatness and success is what you attract to yourself, not what you pursue, what you attract to yourself by reason of who you are becoming. If I'm still the person yesterday, today, then I do not deserve to get any result different from that which I had yesterday. 
the results you seek cannot come to this version of you. They are to come, but not this version of you. The anointing that you seek cannot come upon this version of you. The prosperity you seek cannot enter into the pocket of this version of you. So many times, the power of restraint is not always demonic. It is God waiting for the version of you that matches that result. Please listen and learn and grow. This is spiritual intelligence. Not every restraint is an attack from Satan. Not every restraint is proof that there is something demonic. Many times it can be God waiting for the version of you that is fit. It is not because God cannot take the members from 100 to 10,000. It is not because God cannot take your finances from 500 to 10 million. It is not because God cannot take your grace from this level to that level. But it cannot come on this version of you. The Bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. They are all called wine skins. The difference is old and new. You are still called a human being. But the difference is the old version and the new version. You are still called a man of God. But the man of God before and the new man of God. Ah, Jesus said, why seekest ye the dead? among the living there was a version of me that lied lifeless you saw that version on the ground but it's no longer in the grave a version of me has arisen in the glory of the father not the one that walked the earth now without blood a version of me that lives by another life i learned this in my life and as a person i stopped wasting my time to change things it is hard to change things do you know how many things in your life you have to change if you pursue them one by one think how hard it is to look for good friends think how hard it is to look for quality connections and relationships think how hard it is to look for information every level already has the systems and the provisions waiting the cheapest way listen it is harder for me to try to reach to something higher than me to bring it down to my level it is wiser to grow to that level where it no longer becomes difficult remember if you watch a child growing up like one of these are little ones they try to reach for something and you see the difficulty they can fall many times it is cheaper sometimes they can try and stand upon something that can throw them and then pick what they want but an adult who has grown just comes and he can look from that height and without pressure pick the things that are hard today are not hard it is your level that defines them so if you grow you will find out that they are not so the finances that looks like a monster of a realm lord when will i go out of this it's only the old version of you is looking at the destiny that only the new version of you can enter so it looks hard spiritually lord is it possible that i can step into this how will i start seeing visions what does it look like to see a vision will i be in myself will i fall down is it that i'm dying those are unnecessary questions just grow when you grow and enter those realms by experience you will have those answers there are many things about your biological life you did not need to ask it's a burden to ask every question what happens to me when i'm a teenager what happens when i'm 13 give me a detailed information of what will happen when i'm 14 years it's unnecessary just grow as you grow many times you will find out that you didn't even consciously pay attention to those transitions let me ask you a question do you know where your clothes of 10 years were? Do you know where they are now? Can you remember giving them out? No. Can you remember burning them up? No. Can you remember packing them to keep somewhere? No. They left for these ones to come. It's a mystery you don't understand. Remember where your first phone is? Remember you didn't throw it. 
Remember you didn't sell it. Remember you didn't sow it. But where is it? Many times we don't know the things around us are living things too. They are governed by laws. They live quietly and we do not know. May the Lord give us understanding. That the things that we call dead are not dead. They can hear and they can see. They are more obedient to the systems of God than us. Are we together? I never had to tell anybody, stop giving me this kind of honorarium. Stop tearing 2A and rolling 500 naira inside and chucking it in my pocket as a bribe. That would be stupid and arrogant. The key is to grow. When you grow, a law prohibits individuals from approaching you that way. Are we together? So many times when you look at the things around you and you don't like them, they were not designed to live. They were designed to be the reality of anybody in that realm. If you don't like them, move to the realm where there are realities that match your desire. Please listen to me. This will give us intelligence. There are many prayers we pray that are, it's just the mercy of God that answers them. They are not wise prayers. They are prayers that are a reflection of spiritual ignorance. Many times the prayer is not take this away from me. Many times the prayer is take me out of this realm. The realities are fixed. They are there. An heir, as long as he's a child, he says, differeth not from a slave, though he be lord of all. He says, but he's under tutors and governors. That means that when you find out there are tutors and governors around, the issue is not to drive them away. The issue is to grow out of childhood and you may not need them again. Praise the Lord. Another analogy, and then I'll begin to teach on what I have tonight. There are many primary schools, I believe they still do it, where the junior students in that primary school wear short trousers. Is that correct? And then when they get to a particular level, they start to wear long trousers. Now imagine someone in, say, primary two, goes to the teacher and say, look, I'm tall. It's something that came genetically. And because of that, it may not look good on me to wear a short trouser. The rules will not change because of you. But when you change, you change the rules. You don't change the rules by changing the rules. You change the rules by leaving the realm where those rules apply. All rules don't apply the same at every level. It is true. Are we together? So we seek to transit by the spirit to realms where certain things no longer hold listen to me look up please look up you're writing but look up if you do not pay attention to what i'm saying this is what will happen to you everybody speaks from the reality that his transition has captured so many times when you hear people speak you will interpret their speakings from your realm and based on your realm it looks untrue with all humility if in 24 hours nobody favors me is proof something is wrong at this level you see that yes the level god has brought me makes it is either an attack or something about my life 24 hours cannot happen without someone favoring me this is the reality at this level. Are we together now? Yes. Once upon a time, if I'm not favored in a year, I'll have to be patient for one year to know whether it's an attack or not. At the end of that year, I say, no, this year it, it was not like that. And then you pray. And then you rise to a realm where it becomes a month. You rise to a realm where it becomes a week. If nobody calls my phone in 24 hours seeking for help, something is wrong. I will go for a retreat. 24 hours. I wake up every day without fail with text messages of people needing the grace of God upon my life. 
Once upon a time, I think something happened to my phone and there was no network. I got up in the morning and flipped my phone and it was empty. I said, this is something is wrong. Something has to be wrong. In five hours, my phone did not ring. Nobody sent a text. Something is wrong. I off the phone and put it back and there the text. I said, this is it. Because that result did not look like my realm. Now, listen, please. Listen to what I'm teaching you. There are levels where if you pray for one hour, you must punish yourself. Hello? This is not religion. You truly must punish yourself because the demand on your life, the daily servicing of your altar, one hour is too small. If you don't meet that target, you must punish yourself by an extended prayer time someday. Why? Because before you finish thanking God for what he has done, the time should have gone. What God has done is to, before you start listening and say, Lord, let me name my blessings. Thank you because the other day they didn't kill my member somewhere. Thank you, oh God, because the wicked did not get a reason to laugh. One hour is already covered. There are people who don't have much to say thank you for. Thank you, Lord, because I'm alive. Thank you because even though my father is alive, Lord, here are my needs. But there are things God has done to you in some realms. It is wicked to use 10 minutes to say thank you. Now, the time someone is interceding is your thanksgiving time. You use that one hour to roll on the ground and say thank you. Sometimes you use 15 minutes to just keep quiet. And let your tears say thank you before you start talking. That's why I'm telling you, praying for one hour in certain realms is not talking in tongues for one hour. There are activities in some realms that is only intercession and warfare. What and what? Intercession and warfare. Because of the seriousness of where you are. But there are realms that God has given you some level of victory. Intercession will be after a prolonged period of cry and thanksgiving. So two people go to pray. Come, show. Two people go to pray. They represent different realms. One person enters and says, Father, I give you thanks. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. This is the day or the night, whatever time of the day that the Lord has made. I rejoice. I give thanks. Shut up. And straight you go into, Lord, these are my petitions. Help me. Oh, this is plenty. The list is increasing. Lord, help me. At a point you start praying, you start lamenting. You are right at that realm. You will find out that the person you went to pray with, you will think he cannot pray. This is what you'll be doing. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I glorify you. He's praying, oh. You are merciful. You are merciful. You are merciful. And a song is playing. Lord, you are merciful. And you are there praying and getting angry. I say, hey, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. You are not at the same realm. Listen carefully. Listen carefully listen that person is taking out time later on you are exhausted you are thirsty you are tired you don't even know you have been praying and miss all around he knows you are praying and miss he's not correcting you because there is a provision of god's mercy that whoever is at that realm god should ignore his mistakes and answer him so you find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense at that realm and you receive supernatural answers. They are not a proof that you are correct. The person standing here already knows you didn't enter his gates with thanksgiving. You didn't even get to his court. You are shouting around the gate. But God came out and helped you. That is not how he helps men. He just came to help you. Now watch this. This is, if you understand, you will now get what I'm telling you. That your prayer life, imagine that two of you come, you, you truly, with, without, without a sense of pride, two of you cannot be prayer partners. It's not like you can pray together, but you can't be prayer partners. You can only be prayer partners corporately and to round up, maybe belong to the same group. Because this guy is already, he brings out his piece of paper. And there's nothing to bring out. You tell him, all right, pray. And you lie down flat. Only to stand up after two hours. You are not sleeping, no. It's part of the prayer time. And the guy says, God, bros, I'm tired. I'll finish. I need to go. I'll come back later. And he says, okay, God bless you. There are certain realms 
where you cannot pray with people there are things god will do and tell you that requires you alone with him so when people are there he will relate with you in a way and manner that is general and you have to remain behind because you know you and god have not talked yet people are there and you are praying generally oh lord thank you for everything okay may god bless you sir we are going to sleep and you tell them go and then immediately you go the atmosphere changes the holy spirit now comes as one adorned for that realm there are ways he cannot relate the the weirdness of his operation at that realm cannot be understood by people because sometimes as soon as he comes there you will do things that don't make sense you will walk alone and fall down and that's it you are in a vision and for the next 30 minutes you are there do you think that person will leave you alone he will wake you and shift you till your spirit cannot return back to your body again so he will allow them go you don't covet a man's prayer dimension by saying let that dimension come and meet me no you don't have enough testimonies to pray that kind of prayer you've not gone through enough pain to know what a man will be doing for three hours everything in your life is paid for by everybody you don't know what it means to be attacked what commission have you been given what assignment what what is the devil going to attack you for it's just general attacks here and there just to bring down your spiritual life nothing serious so you can stroll around for 10 minutes and go but there are certain burdens that when, I, when they're on your head the time it takes me to pray for one department alone in koinonia will surprise you there are, when you know see listen the weight on your head determines how you walk if you are carrying a cup on your head you can even leave it and walk around if you are carrying a headpan you can walk around if you are carrying a destiny the walk is so slippery god must lead you on how to walk this is what people do not understand so this thing people generally call prayer is many things at many realms that's why you see me encourage people i as i began to grow in the things of god i found out that i cannot pray comfortably in the daytime my life at this level will not allow me to maximize prayer the distraction that will come from my phone ringing i don't off my phone whether i'm on pulpit or my phone is if my phone is off i'm either taking a flight or maybe something is done. you see that i charge my phone an average of twice every day i have to because of you do you know living is not general the concept of living is dimensional listen to me that means when you are tired of certain things certain experiences around you someone else is coming into that dimension so you are not going to say lord take away those things your job is to rise to the next dimension are we together now yes once upon a time i remember those days if there were 30 people and i was going to minister to them i would have to lay hands on everybody one by one it was very exhausting and i said god there has to be a better way once upon a time if god is talking to me and i see in the spirit that god wants to touch you i will have to walk to you to touch you for that word to come to pass that was it was not what god could do it was what my renewal and my alignment at that level could allow him to do and i knew that if i continue that way what if i have 30 minutes to preach and god wants to touch 500 people i follow them one by one touch somebody in overflow three come back touch this how do you touch the people online and then i said god there has to be a way and he said of course there is a way for i am a man under authority and i say to one go and he goeth that your words can become you you don't have to move your presence can be poured into your words you can send it on errand back 
taught by the anointing of the spirit and it will produce the same effect and i said okay god what does it take let's go if you are interested now when you rise to that realm you will see it and then sometimes a new believer will sit down and be wondering wow how does this thing happen if the holy spirit shows me that he wants to touch someone in overflow three now you see all i need to do is not just to speak it or say it you see that you agree with god it looks simple until you are taught what really happens you come and collect the mic and talk i will tell you when god wants to touch somebody your job is to just say it and you will be very surprised to see as if god doesn't love you so most of this prayer lord why did you disgrace me i went to this meeting expecting the result of a realm you went to the meeting with the expectation of a realm you have not entered because you saw somebody and you said no abba this must happen are we together there are people who carry graces as soon as they sit down and begin to talk something about the realm and the dimension of god that they walk in will force you to pay attention they don't have to say keep quiet no there are realms where they say oh yeah keep quiet now praise god everybody listen but there are realms where there are other provisions some spiritual arsenals have been provided that compel men to hear you so you can see two men of god operating everybody's bringing his possibilities are we together yes to believe that everybody is just generically carrying eternal life carrying the holy spirit you are right but you are wrong people come with their realms and the possibilities that come with those realms listen to me and that means that if and when you are tired of what you are seeing and you do not like it the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord there is a hill there is a level where you can rise to elijah was sitting uphill and he was able to see those who were coming and he called down fire on them he was sitting at an altitude physically but that can also be symbolic of an altitude in the spirit papa Ia deboe can just come and stand on this pulpit and just say thank you and speak and say let me bless you i declare that before the end of this week you will be favored now he's speaking from a realm you will say amen it may not sound charismatic it may not sound apostolic nobody falls nobody rises but the nature of the spiritual provision that follows his grace will insist that that word comes to pass not because you believe it for the sake of the position he represents to the body so you see him not say well do you have there are realms where you say have faith press I'm sensing unbelief. You are stopping this thing from happening. Truly, there are dimensions where God does a thing, not just for his name's sake. He does it to honor the covenant he has with the vessels. It's true. That's why you can find somebody will come under a ministry and way before he starts learning how to tight, he will start receiving results of a tighter breakthrough open doors and when you meet him and say you are so successful teach me about success it will be the worst 30 minutes of your life he will vent ignorance from a to z and say why are you succeeding he say, well i don't know and truly he's right he doesn't know and if he makes a mistake to go out of that covering in one week everything will dry because that thing will come his results will come back to look like his true realm do you believe what i'm sharing with you yes the animals did not want to be saved they didn't know how to be saved but they came under the covering of noah's ark it was built with food inside to sustain them the animals would come out after the flood like heroes but where they left alone they would die there are dimensions in the spirit 
and there are realities. That means that if I want you to move to another dimension of results, then I must be able to guide you on the principles that will transit you from where you are to where you need to be. There are destinies that no matter how you pray and fast at that level, there are certain levels of the blessings of the Lord that may never be made manifest. Your capacity at that level will not allow God bless you. There is no need for that level of blessing at that level. Are we together? There are things you must be taught. That means every time, come, look up please. That means every time the word of God is coming to you, it's not only edifying you, listen very carefully, it's not only informing you, it's transiting you. That means a possibility exists that you came here, koinonia, at a realm and by the time we're sharing the grace you think because you wore the same clothes you are the same person going out immediately you step out you will find out that the reality that followed you here is not the reality that went out with you many of you especially men of god come here and you just sit for one meeting and at the end of it sometimes you don't even get to see me and you are prayed for and that's it all you need to do is go back to your church or your fellowship and the first surprise is when you open your Bible. Ah, ah, what is this again? Then you stand to pray and it will surprise you. Let me tell you another thing that will surprise you. Your worship team members that didn't follow you will start singing and you will think this is Koinonia worship team. You took something more than you back to your meeting. Are you seeing that? Remember, you didn't call them to tell them, look, this is where I went to. This is the grace I carried. You went quietly. But the nature of that grace is like a software. It starts reprogramming everything around you to reflect the level you have now entered. All of a sudden, you find out that if you are someone who were not excellent, for instance, and you contacted that grace for excellence, you come back with it. You don't have to start teaching first. You will find out that in a span of two months, exceptionally excellent people will start coming to your platforms. They were called. There is a grace that calls them. They don't hear you because you are not yet at the level where they hear. There are ministries that no matter what branch you open, even if they open the branch close to a mosque, they must have excellent people. It's not like they bring people from the headquarters. The grace was designed to ransack the city and look for those who must make the anointing that is upon that level to walk to come there are cities where people hardly get land for church and for certain things but there are ministries that enter with some graces as soon as they enter there must be vacancy suddenly somebody gets visa and is going abroad and he leaves his house and they demolish that house and it becomes a church the pressure that that grace puts on a territory until there are results please listen to what i'm telling you that means there is a grace you can carry that when you stand somewhere it becomes impossible for people to ignore you it's not you you have risen to a level that grace will begin to compel. It will orchestrate a scenario that must bring you out. No matter where you hide, something must happen. To the point that if God, if it's a grace at that level, God has mandated that at that level, any time you go, you must be seen and his grace must be acknowledged. So you are humble. And because you are in that place, God, that anointing can make somebody who has no business coming there, who knows you, to come there so that he can announce you and then leave the grace on your life. There are dimensions of favor that you can enter into. Huh? That even if it's on a Saturday night, you speak over people, they must be blessed. Even if it's Sunday during service, It's true. It's true. There are graces. 
Please listen to me. There are dimensions you get to in the spirit that when you make certain spiritual utterances and say God said, even if it's not God that said it, because of the realm you occupy, he will honor what you have said and rebuke you when you go back. Are we together? That means it is possible for a man of God, a prophet, to come and see. Learn this. A prophet can come and see that Shehu is supposed to be blessed October. That's what the revelation gave and is accurate. But I can come with a dimension. Listen carefully. Until a higher dimension comes, the highest grace that spoke is what works. But when a higher grace comes, I can make that October become tomorrow. I'm not a prophet. I came with a realm of intimacy and a covenant that I have with God. And I can look at him and say, my friend, um, something fell down and you gave me. Look at this. I bless you by tomorrow. And God will take what... It doesn't mean the prophet lied. It is the implication of the realm that was introduced. Believers hear this and grow. So if you don't understand, you may go back and say, fake prophet, you prophesied nonsense. No, the prophet himself, even that office is in levels. A prophet in this realm is not greater than a Christian in this realm. The realm which is a reflection of his work with God must bow. Listen, the office that that man has as powerful as it is, there is a realm of intimacy you can have with God that equals that office. You are not a prophet, but the level of dealing you have gotten with, your result is the same result a prophet will get. So when you stand side by side by, with a prophet, they will call two of you prophets. You are not a prophet. You have only transited to a realm where there is no difference between you and the result of a prophet or an apostle. These are deep mysteries in the kingdom that many people do not understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's powerful. That means if you truly want to be a blessing, more than office, more than titles, seek to be transitioned to a deep dimension of work with the Holy Spirit where there are results you will command that it looks like you are getting results from every office. A point will come, your members will not even know who you are. They said, this guy is a prophet, but are you really a prophet? This guy is an evangelist, but you are prophesying more than a prophet. And you say you are an evangelist. You say, God told me I'm an evangelist. You started as an evangelist. Your intimacy took you to the realm where only prophets should get to and took you to a realm higher than that dimension. That means it is possible for a man of God you offend to curse you in anger. And truly it will happen. But a man of God will come who is not a prophet, not an apostle, not anything. But in a dimension of grace, he has been given the power. He will nullify that thing and say it is true. Based on this course, you should die tomorrow. But I hold your hands. God, look at him for my sake. Let it go. It's true. I'm looking for the best way I will help you understand this thing tonight. These are the dimensions that are at work in us. That certain things can happen to people because certain people are there. Are we together? Yes. All of these things you see are provisions that God put in place to ensure that the body continues to grow and that we continue to receive results. You can't believe that I've not even touched my message tonight. I just came with a hunger and a burden. Let's see what I can touch. 
I took the A part of what I want to share last week. Responding to the situation that we have that is widespread now. People getting frustrated as to whether the word of God produces results or not. Many of you have seen the rate of suicide and the rate of not armed robbery, not Boko Haram. These are people killing themselves now. A man leaves his family and then they are called that he died. Left a note, I'm tired of life and that's it. And young people also killing themselves. And those who are alive, it's almost as if they are dead already. Depression. Teenagers having depression. Young people having high blood pressure. All kinds of health related issues. There is an answer. I attempted to answer that question last week. Was it or the week before last? That the reason, the first reason that we looked at was because of the nature and the kind of mentorship and teaching. Are we together? I stated that people have been taught that the value of their life is in the abundance of the physical things they get. And so by the time you find out that you are unable to get a car and a house and a child and a husband and a wife and certain things at certain levels, self-inflicted frustration begins to come. Listen carefully. And as a result, people become depressed. You hear people saying, as old as I am, I, I don't have a child or I don't have a wife or I don't have a husband or I don't have my own house. Can you imagine at this age I'm still renting? Can you imagine this and that? Can you imagine at this age I have only three girls, no boy, you know, and all of these kinds of things. And I told us that it is because first the kinds of teachings, please listen carefully. The kinds of teachings that we have taught people. We have taught people that spirituality, and in many circles, sadly, that spirituality is only measured in the acquisition of physical things. Are we together? So, by the time I have, by the time I have certain things for a prolonged period of time, maybe a house, a car, and all of that, I am perceived to not be growing spiritually. Are we together? Yes. Why do you still have this car after 10 years? Why are you still living here after 20 years? So that pressure to do things, to prove that the word is working. When our, our expectations continually become disappointed, then we are plunged into that state of depression. Are we together? But then tonight's teaching also is an attempt to bring balance to it. To help us understand it is important for us to get results and I want to talk um, maybe just a few minutes our time is already spent on the fact that I believe that many people are unable to rise to the realms please listen the realms that will allow their lives reflect the faithfulness of God among many things because we have not learned thank you we have not learned that success is not something you pursue please say after me you do not pursue success you do not pursue greatness there is nobody who tries to pursue success or pursue greatness whether spiritually financially and otherwise that will ever have it it is not something you pursue. Please listen to me. It is something that you draw. It is attracted to your life on the strength of who you become. And listen to me. There are certain traits. Every blessed man, every anointed man, every influential man, everyone that has been trusted with grace and influence will tell you. Listen, there are a set of traits that individuals must possess. You call it character, you call it whatever it is. There are belief systems. Say belief systems. There are, there are mindset conditionings that you must be able to have that will allow you to transit, like I said earlier, to the realms where these things 
effortlessly. Let me tell you this. Every time you struggle unnecessarily to get something, stop immediately. Did you hear what I said? Every time you are struggling unnecessarily to get a thing, stop immediately. It may be proof that you have not acquired the spiritual, the psychological, and the spiritual, maybe sometimes the intellectual stamina to bring that thing. This is rainy season. No farmer would go to the farm and have to labor so much to till the ground. Why? Because part of the provision of the rainy season is a system that softens the soil. Are we together now? But if you try to till the ground by November, December, especially at this part of the country, you're going to have a hard time. So there are certain things we are trying to get. It's proof that although you are trying to reach out and it's running away from you, is telling you something by running that you are not yet qualified for me. So instead of running unnecessarily, cut away and stay back and build the belief systems, build the track record in the spirit that makes for that thing. And I tell you, whatever it is that left you will come to you and stick to you and refuse to go. It is true for finances. It is true for ministry. It is true for leadership. It is true for the anointing. It is true for revelation. It is true for anything. I want to walk you through a few belief systems tonight. Maybe just two, three and we'll pray since our time is gone. That I believe is pivotal to our entering these new seasons that the Lord has spoken to us about. There are many of us who can sense in the spirit that I am at the edge I am, I've exhausted my current level. Are we together now? That financially, spiritually, and otherwise, but let me limit it to uh, the things that pertain unto life, the things that matter to our life, our upkeep, our welfare, and so on and so forth. Because that is what is causing the depression. I don't think anyone will go and kill himself just because he doesn't know God. He would rather fast. He would rather pray. He would rather buy books. But when you are unable to pay the fees of your children, when you are unable to do well, when you are unable to take care of your parents and do all of that, the accumulated frustration can push you to a point. Do you know that in all fairness, I think in the last one or two weeks, I've gotten at least one text every day. People just calling and saying, Apostle, please you have to talk to me. Otherwise, I've been sensing, I've been hearing a voice say I should kill myself. I'm good for nothing repeatedly from different regions and then i knew that this this is terrible hearing voices getting frustrated feeling my life cannot you know my life would not make sense the the latest of the suicide issues i got to hear was a man a father who had a quarrel with his wife this is a true story some of you may have heard it a man who picked a quarrel with his wife and she took out time and blasted him and told him how irresponsible, how shameless, how disappointed she was in him, how sad she felt that she got married to him, and told him, is it that his children were also disappointed? And the last they said was that the man went out. He just left, and that was it. They thought he was kidnapped. They thought he was killed. They didn't see him for a few days, and they thought he was just, you know, men and their anger, until police traced down and they found out that the man had died and they traced that the death was suicide now if you trace i'm not talking against church but if you trace that man will have to be associated with a group a church a fellowship or some kind of spiritual platform that means it is irresponsible for any man of god any spiritual leader to not at least respond to these things listen sociologically speaking men of god are also mind control systems men of god are also agents of transformation and much more than helping people to build their spiritual convictions we must pay attention to make sure that when there is an there is a psychological epidemic within a territory it is wise for every responsible man of God who has a sizable influence over people to contribute in making the people stay in a position that will not allow Satan to bring all of those kinds of predicaments. Are we together? Say, I need results in my life. 
it is true that results are not the basis of our confidence it is true that results are not the object not the motivation behind our pursuit of god and our walk in the faith however as i have said i will continue to say again that results among other things are a system of consolation results are proof that you are adhering to spiritual laws results are also proof in many regards that god is with you not all the time but many times rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god how do we know for no man can do these things so when god is with you there are some things there are some evidences attestations of his presence that must be there and the lord put it in my heart and i know by experience and by the privilege of mentorship from exceptionally successful people in the faith life financially and so on and so forth that there might be a few things we may be missing as believers or other things that we need to inculcate that can transit us to the levels that we seek to have the results that will make us at ease to know and believe that God is faithful. Are we together? So I want to share with us a few things that just take note of it. We'll just take three for the sake of time and then we'll pray tonight. Hallelujah. The first belief system that I want us to learn tonight that helps us to be great and helps us to transit well, look up please, is that all truly great people do not derive their confidence and their self-worth from the things that are outside them please listen all great people do not derive their self-worth from the abundance of the external things that they have cars houses certificates achievements as powerful as all these things are no truly great man especially in the kingdom, derives his self-worth from the abundance of these things. That means that when I buy a new shoe, when I buy a new cloth, then I feel more successful. When the cloth spoils, I feel less successful. That's a terrible way to live. Are we together now? The Bible, um, I think that should be, I hope it's, uh, what scripture now? Is it Luke chapter 12? It just came to my spirit. Let's look at it. Luke chapter 12, I believe it is. Jesus was teaching Luke chapter 12. Yes, and verse 15. Give it to us please quickly. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Everyone please look up. It's projected. Here's what the Bible says. Jesus is teaching now. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of what? Covetousness. Greed. Greed, that's the word there, greed. It says, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of what? Things which he possesseth. That means the true value of your life and my life is not in cars, is not in houses. Are we together now? So you must bring yourself to a point where even though I'm trusting God for a car, a house, I'm trusting God for... Um, advanced certifications I'm trusting God to go abroad I'm trusting God to increase membership I'm trusting God to have children and so on and so forth my life cannot be and my sense of success cannot be defined by these things you know why? because these things vacillate they go up and they go down praise the Lord I was sharing, I think it was with our school of ministry students yesterday. And um, it started with the leaders during the leaders meeting. Um, I traveled to one of the states and my phone just fell into mud and water and it was just gone, just gone completely. And while they were still deciding for me what other phone I would buy to replace that one, I decided to take the old phone. Remember that my old phone that you people hate so much that you've done your best to make sure I throw away? You know, I dusted the whole thing and I got it back in shape. And then when I went for the leaders meeting, I could see the body language, all the leaders. Oh, not again. You could see apostle, you've left this, you know, and all of that. And um, I used the opportunity to start sharing with them a bit of what I'm sharing with you now. Imagine that I tied my sense of self-worth 
into a, an exceptional fold. I will now begin to tell myself things that I think you are thinking. Ah, that means Apostle's finances is going down. This one that he replaced this phone. Maybe he sold it all because he's broke. Because he's looking for something. Now remember you are not thinking that. It is a make-believe that has come as a result of my tying myself worth to phones. There are people who cannot leave their homes until they borrow certain things and wear. There are people who cannot because they have created perceptions. There are men of God and women of God who cannot be themselves. More than half of their life is not them. It's a dangerous way to live. Listen very carefully. I show you a quick way to suicide. Tie your self-worth to things. And sooner or later you'll find out that you will need a knife, you will need a hoe, a cutlass, or a rope to kill yourself because of disappointed expectations. There are people who have tied their self-worth to the quality and the wealth of the kinds of families they have come from. So they will deny their parents because your mother is somewhere, maybe roasting corn or selling something by the road. And the impression that you have given people is that you are an exceptional Harvard type young man who most likely has spent a major part of his life abroad. And now they need to see your mother or your father. And based on your belief system, you think that looking at her and her state will will be a disadvantage to the perception you are proposing so you will call your mother your auntie say just one of our relatives that just came to stay with us i mean even me i'm surprised now seeing her outside you think what i'm saying is silly except for the fact that it is true how many people will never be proud of even their homes where they live your family house yes i know that they use mud to build it but the mud is not inside your mind but simply because you don't want we have a slang that our generation calls this call it falling your hand correct how will i take these people in my department my departmental people want to greet my parents how will i now take them to a house that is smelling the there's humidity even inside the house the carpet i mean everything there are roaches flying around i don't want to be associated with that less the person who wants to marry me who has been perceiving that i'm a lady who was born inside an airplane may now have to make up his mind and change his perception let me advise you and let me encourage you i have a responsibility over you listen to me if you tie yourself worth to anything outside you get set for a shock in this life hallelujah god forbid but if any of my vehicles have break down and it's time for me to come for koinonia i would stop a bike outside quickly and say mr man please take me i'm late and, and you know, members can rob this. They'll say, my apostle, the servant of the living God. You know, they, they will rob it in and make you say, bike, stop. Stop. Let me just go back home. Tell them I'm not around. If you need things to validate who you are, you are in trouble. Because you will never have enough things. That's why we seek to change phones. Listen, let your motivation be a sincere desire to transit to a more effective version of yourself not that it is in the acquisition of these things that's why we are disappointed now i bought the phone now i i got the new hair now i got the clothes i got the designers i expected you to notice it and commend me and you ignored me so frustration starts are we together now did you not notice my perfume have you not noticed that i've changed perfume what is my business i'm thinking about my own destiny somewhere did you not notice i changed the car did you not notice i moved to a house have you not noticed that levels have changed i will never tie anything my self-worth to anything no matter how great they are i tell you the truth they are mundane things this teaching may not be popular but it's the way of peace it's not teaching you to be a mediocre it's giving you rest rest you've heard me say it again anything that is what's taking my life on i put it inside me 
God, Holy Spirit, quality information, anything that is too big to enter inside me is not worth my attention. People's vehicles spoiled and they, they were too embarrassed to go to work. Why? Because they say, ah, Ogasi or your car spoiled. My self-worth and your self-worth must be a derivative of who you are in Christ and what he has done and what you now possess. So the first thing I'm advising you, and listen to me, Koinonia, I have a responsibility over you and over those who are following. The mainstream mindset is to receive an applause because of things. You bought a new watch. How much is this watch? 300,000. Wow. You are wearing a 300,000 watch. That's somebody's salary for one year. Man, you are not a small man. No, and you enjoy it foolishly. Not knowing that that watch can be stolen. It, it can spoil. It can leave you. God can instruct you to sew it. Many things can happen around that watch. Why will you tie your self-worth? And then you find out that you are no longer with the watch. And then you are just looking. Someone may be noticing that I'm not wearing the watch. Uh, well, let me just explain. God asked me, to, who asked you? The, nobody is thinking about you. As they are looking at you, they are thinking about their problems. Ah, where will I call my mother now? Oh God, let someone send me 400 naira recharge card. And you are there in a make-believe of your own manufacture. Say, I reject bondage. Shout it, I reject bondage. Ah, you used to you used to wear a hair of 10,000 before. What happened? I noticed you have started wearing the one of 115 and 2. Is everything all right with your finance? What is your business? Does the 150 not stay? Oh, please. I noticed you used to bab every two weeks, but in the last one week, I'm just a concerned brother. It's like a, you, it's that you don't have money. If you don't have money, use bab. Just, just clean it. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine for God's sake. Don't be under pressure and say, I must do this. I must be this. If you come to my house and meet me drinking Gary, I will only put it in a better cup if I honor you. But Gary, you must drink. I will not borrow money to buy minerals because of you. No. Listen to me. Be healed of this societal pressure. And let me tell all family people in Kononia, please hear me. Let nobody put pressure on you. Whether a minister, whether a leader, it should not be had in this ministry. That because anybody came to visit they put pressure on you. You must fry plantain, fry chips. If you have it, praise God. If you don't, even if you don't have anything, put cold water in the fridge and serve. Do not derive self-worth. Don't expect people to treat you unusually just because you bought a new car. Just because you bought a new house. Um, just to let you know that levels have changed. Um, I got a job with NMPC and for starters, they gave me 1.5. And uh, because of that, I want to see apostle. I don't have the time to join the queue. Can you please fast track the thing? I have a seed and the seed is a sizable one. What do you think I am? That's why it's good for a man of God to be blessed. Because when you are blessed, you are not looking at anybody's envelope and checking the size. No. No, we know man after the flesh. Please listen very carefully. Say in the name of Jesus, my confidence and my self-worth will never be on external things. It will be on who I am in Christ and what Jesus has done in my life. So be proud of yourself and be proud of your level. If it's only one shoe you have, wear it every Friday. Wear it every Sunday. 
let us see it as a testament so that the day God blesses you, anybody who says it was a mistake, you will not be the one to answer. I'll say I was a witness. I saw that one shoe for two years while he was walking the world. Are we together? Sisters, don't let any brother come to you in the abundance of substance or things just to toy around with your mind and toy around with your life. Say, you know, I'm this and that and that. My father is a governor of which state? What is your surname? Are the states in Nigeria many that we don't know? My father is a this. My father is a king. My mother is a this. I'm a prince. As you see, I'm just a humble one. No. Whether you are a prince or not, that's not anybody's business. People should honor you because of genuine character. That you are a man of character. That you are a woman of character. Is a nobler reason for honor than things. Number two. Ready? Koinonia <laughs> is great. Praise the Lord. You must conquer greed. Write it down. The one cancer behind the, the restraint of God to bless many people. Greed. 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 You know, most people think rich people are the ones who are greedy. I tell you this sincerely. The reason why many poor people, poor Christians especially, who have an advantage of the Holy Spirit, if you have an advantage of the Holy Spirit and he's watching you poor, there's something you are doing to him. He is there as the advantage in your life. Greed. Many believers are greedy. It's shown in their givings. You started giving 10 naira as a student, as offering. And now you are director. You are giving 20 naira. Is that the measure of the lifting of God upon your life? No. Oh. Greed. Closely related to greed, please write. Selfishness. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. Please listen very carefully. Jesus Christ is speaking to us. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. What is selfishness? Look at this. Come, doctor selfishness and self-centeredness is when you desire something so bad you do not care what effect it creates on others selfishness is not desiring good things it is desiring good things to the point that you do not care what it does to others that means that i so want to get to this speaker i don't care if i match and i match and i put dr emeka i just want to reach there there are many of us who are like that. Many Nigerians are like that. And I'm cautioning you because it's a spirit everywhere. It's like nobody cares about the effect of what they are, they are wanting to rise causes for others. I want to be a CEO. I will kill anybody if possible to be that CEO. Me, myself. The language of our generation is what is in it for me. Once there is nothing in it for you, it's not your business. No. It's not the language of great people. Great leaders, great leaders are selfless people. Great people are selfless people. The Bible says looking up to Jesus. Jesus did not come to the earth to pursue an agenda of himself. Please listen to me. I've taught us that it is about us but not all about us. When your life becomes all about you, then you are in trouble. This ministry was founded upon selflessness. Truly, selflessness. Many of you, as you are now, God is helping you. But you want to so grow and rise. There is none of... Our children here that is going to school because of your school fees. You are waiting till the day you become a millionaire. Some of them, their school fees is 2,000, 3,000, 
10,000. You are so engrossed. You can package 100,000 and bring. Let me lay hands on you to climb the ladder fast. But a little child can come and hug you and say, Uncle, I'm not going to school. Well, let me join. Am I, your, am I your, your father? You see that? Selflessness. Selflessness. The selfishness in our world is so terrible. So terrible. People will do anything and not mind. They will, they will hit your car on the road because they want to hurry up. Break your, your, your what they call it, your side mirror and just hold you and say sorry. I see that's the solution to it. I'm in a hurry. To where? How about many of us here? You don't care if your siblings rise. Listen, you are not called to carry everybody's load in your life. But you are called to at least pay attention to the effect of what your rising is creating. You can't ignore everybody and your whole world is about you. Ladies, listen to me. Because you are the ones that are most hit with this mindset. It is always about me. My money is for me. My everything is for me. Someone can give you 2,000 naira recharge card as a seed. You will flash him to call you so you will say thank you. What do we call that? Greed and selfishness. Listen. Listen to me. Many of our parents today, many of our parents, respectfully speaking and with due honor to our elderly people here, many of our parents, this is what closed their door. They were so willing to succeed that they kicked every destiny helper out. And when they got to a place where they needed help, there was nobody to help them now. When they were in the civil service, some of them got to the echelon of their, their pursuit. They never raised anybody. All they were concerned about is me. I must sit down and eat. And now they've retired. No young person can come and say, Sir, in 1995, it was because of you I got a job. Today I've come with a seed to say thank you. Let me tell you, sincerely speaking, many of us here are young people, but let me tell you, if you are old and nobody sees the need to take care of you and to say thank you, it's a sign that you spent your life in selfishness and greed. Are we together? Last year during my birthday, the greatest gift that was given to me was a letter by my little children. They write me letters all the time. They write all kinds of things, but I love their letters and I read every one of it. They draw love, they write Jesus on it, they try to draw my face, they write, you have been a nice daddy, thank you. Those things mean a lot to me than chicken, than whatever it is. You eat those things and go to the toilet and it's all. But those things are a reflection it's a sign that when you are old, those ones, they can come to you and say, make sure this person never cries, even in old age. You say, but he's not your father. He say, he was better than my father. If nobody can remember you for good, it's a sign that you are digging the grave already, even while you are alive. Please hear me. Great people are not great because they are pursuing all they want. It's not all about you. Everything God gives you, people should rejoice with you because they know that by the grace of God and with all humility, even if it's the crumbs from the table, it will reach them. I look at us, please look at me. I can tell you why God has not answered your prayer of financial prosperity. He has discerned the extent of greed. That in your being blessed, nobody, nobody, Many of us are so greedy and selfish that anytime you are blessing somebody, they know that you are looking for something. Whether you are looking for a life partner or you are looking for a destiny helper or you are looking for, for something, it is not you to give. I think if I stop giving, it may affect me. I may even fall down and die. 
But you know, Apostle, we are not very blessed. It's you people that God has helped. That is the talk of a greedy person. If you can't give clothes, there is food. One day you can make up your mind to cook two pots of food and call somebody and say, I may not do much now, but I am breaking the spirit of greed. Please come and eat in my house. They come the next day and say, no, no, no. I was only training myself. Don't come every day. Don't be ashamed of saying it because human beings will always take you for granted. You do it once and pursue them and don't feel bad. Tell them, please, at training, I will, when, when I get to that realm, you will come. But for now, come and eat. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus, the spirit of greed, the spirit of selfishness, I curse it from my life. Many believers are like that. Two women or two men can be talking. I can be talking with Dr. Emeka and in his presence, I will bring out 2,000 naira, buy egg roll and minerals and hold it while we are talking and finish it and eat the egg roll and squeeze the leather and match it. Hapa! It's inhuman to live like that. Giving is living. You must trust God for grace. Don't wait till you are a millionaire. I'm telling you, listen, this, these are belief systems that will make your life exceptional. God will never trust a greedy and a selfish person. When he sends a word to Jacob, it's because Jacob can let that word reach Israel. If God gives you money, can God look at many people in Koinonia today and say, instead of blessing five people and giving them school fees, I know they are coming, but can I bless you? And then they rejoice. The angels rejoice and say, these children have gone to school. Why? Because one person was blessed. What does it take for God to give you a job? What does it take for God to turn the economic tide in your life? It takes more than studying business. Let me tell you. It takes more than we've taught you a lot and you know that there are astute business people in this place. We're not just men of God. We're not daft people. We're economically sound. We're financially sound. But I tell you this. Much more than just the value you give who you are is higher than what you do. I had a conversation of recent with a very wealthy man, such a rare privilege, and I met him, and I asked him one question. I said, sir, let me ask you one question. I said, what kind of people will you be looking for at this level? And he looked at me and smiled and said, Apostle, you are very smart. I said, thank you, sir. My mind was just on the answer. And he said, should I tell you honesty? He said, yes. And then he kept quiet and took a deep breath. He said, I will answer you in a story. And then he told me a story. And at the end of it, he said, let me test. I already told you you're intelligent. What kind of people do you think I'll be needing? I said, trustworthy people. He said, that's it. The morale of the story he gave me was that he would pay any amount to have people who are selfless enough. He said every storekeeper and every foreman he employed cheated him. And 95% of them were Christians. Recommended by pastors. He sincerely told me that the non-believers who have handled that branch of his business have been more honest than even the people. Because of greed. 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 Let them know that the word is working. So you steal everything. You steal cement. You steal everything and sell it and quietly cover it up. Do you not know that when truth was buried, it came out of the grave? Hallelujah. There are very, very... Listen, let me teach you this. If you are a businessman here, please, more than value and productivity, look for selfless people. When you find selfless people, you have not found cheap people. 
you have found priceless people. Our generation is full of everybody who is looking for everything for myself. Let me quickly cash in on the moment while I have the time. Some of you looking at me now as born again as you are, let me keep you in a room with plenty money scattered. If I count it, you will behave because it's counted. But let me just scatter it and leave you. You will first check whether there's a CCTV, look around and pray in tongues so that those outside will think there's prayer going on. And you just bend as if you are sweeping and carry one and put in your pocket. Who do you think is watching? God alone? Demons. Angels. The demons that will oppress you and you will shout in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Are you joking? Please, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that the grace to be selfless, may that grace come upon you. There are nurses that are not selfless. Is that not so? In your hospital. There are doctors that are not selfless. A woman comes, she wants to give birth, and they are acting as if, please, madam, if you would die, sir, just die there. Whereas that woman has been trusting God for a child for 12 years. And you see the greed and the selflessness. Are you from my tribe? Are you from my place? Are you from here? No. Self. I, these are the things I pray for for myself. These are the things that have brought blessings to my life. That you show God. I told you that the Lord told me, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. There are many of you that desire anointing. Apostle, anoint me. And I look at you, it's not even God, even me I know. The things you will do if that anointing really comes. You will first run to your enemies and say you are finished. You don't know what I'm carrying. Just know it's over. And if you think I'm joking, you, you will die tomorrow. You, you will die on Thursday. By the time you kill people in a row, in one week, you say, what? This grace is powerful. Even me, I didn't know it's this powerful. Listen to my message. Can God trust you? Go and listen to it. Please, media, let our family online and in diaspora listen to that message. Can God trust you? Powerful message. Many times, it is not just in the fasting and the prayer, as powerful as it is. It's positioning yourself. God, let me be your treasurer on earth. The last treasurer betrayed you. Here is a faithful one. And God is saying, can I trust you? Say, yes, trust me. God gives you 500,000. Your spirit is still sound. Your head is still sound. And he sees how you bless people. He'll say, you did this for me. Let me take it to another level. Whereas all your prayer from your small mind is, God, give me five million. Oh God, give me five. Five million will change my life. Based on what your mind told you. Whereas he's thinking of giving you gold as dust. And giving you the keys to the hearts of nations. Lord, give me the grace to prophesy. As soon as God gives you that grace, you just say, I found my stream of income. I'm not wasting my time for anything again. I will never prophesy free. I it didn't, it was not, I got the anointing at a cost. And God says, You see your heart? You were there fasting. I warned you. And now that you have the anointing, and because it is valuable, people will now begin to pay. 100,000 per prophecy, 30,000 per prophecy and the truth is that the grace will work and while you are paying and paying you are happy you are building houses collecting people's houses collecting people's cars and doing all of that god is watching you he's watching you because he knows one day you will exhaust that realm so you'll go back again and say lord i'm here he said, it's not me you are talking to it's not me you are talking to i gave you a grace I saw what you did with that grace. Lord, give me the kind of apostle's grace. And he tests you. 20 missed calls by 1 a.m. You don't answer any one of them. The 21st one you call and say, let me tell you something. I'm a human being too. I sleep. I this. I that. I hate you. Don't do this to me again. The next time you do it. And God says, look at the grace you want. Listen. 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 Please look at me selflessness is an unusual virtue 
that is the reason why not everybody has it why will you reward everybody when they have the same thing dr mike Murdoch says that our similarities create our comfort it's our difference that creates our reward hallelujah how far can you go for the sake of people how far can you go for the sake of god some of you have vehicles you've never carried anybody after service even if it's raining you horn them and say you are going and god is watching and you already say no god i'm trusting you to give me one car that i saw on my way going somewhere and god says you think i'm stupid there are some of you even if it's on a bike or a bicycle you will never help anybody may god never give you anything that you will regret did you hear what i said may god never give you anything that you will say i feel pained that i gave this man this maybe i'll stop here let me just talk about it the third trait you must embrace is humility i have to talk about it our time is gone but spare me two three five minutes humility humility please look at me the bible says love not the world nor the things that are in this world he says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then it categorizes the things we can love into three the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh number three is called the pride of life there are many people please listen to me you see ba africa hear me now i'm not just talking to zaria i'm not just talking to nigeria i'm talking to africa listen to me because of our background huh and the way we have suffered and the way people have looked down on us and some of us because of our cultural context please listen to me there is that itch to be celebrated there is that itch that urge to be perceived as great and valuable are we together and there's nothing wrong with that we call it spotlight is the slang we have for it some of you i just mentioned spotlight you're already laughing i mean you just imagine yourself there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that pride is one thing that will make god fight a man god will not fight a man because of sin god will not fight a man even because of disobedience but pride he says that god gives opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble one of the one of the one of the greatest justification for pride is wealth and achievement please listen wealth and achievement every time god warned people of pride it had to do with wealth and achievement deuteronomy chapter 8 you don't have to turn there just read the bible says let it not be that when you have what built houses and done this the, done this and that achievement that you will say my power and the might of my hand has given me this and then verse 18 says but thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he it is he leave the remaining statement it is he he is the focus humility is not refusing what god has done humility is not simplicity humility is acknowledging god as the basis of every achievement that you have outspokenly in your body language and in your conversation god it is unto you apostle joshua selman the great man changing people ah a man can receive nothing precious people except it is given to him from god it's very difficult for some of you to say this thing why because you feel if i say it i'm taking away the spotlight from me pride there are many people there are many parents 
who would have been lifted but pride pride they will not be good examples look at me let me tell you why some of you are finding it difficult to access the blessings of god to lift you you are not going to be a good model being blessed you are the best christian model at your current state if you rise higher than that especially financially you will kill people some of you if you rise financially your mother your father your siblings and everybody they will kneel down to greet you every morning simply because you paid rent simply because you paid this i failed in life and people i think i'm a failure but now that i've succeeded i will rub it on the face of everybody no that is the way of the world we are kingdom people can you be blessed and still remain humble can you be blessed and still stoop down to people's levels can you be blessed and not disturb people with noisy of your achievement <laughs> just to just to meet you and say ah um um just to let you know are you aware that i just came back from lagos and uh i flew in you came that's the most important thing whether you crawled whether you drove whether you flew avoid some of those those talks i was in the plane and ah you know i was uh, i was i don't know have you ever sat down in a business class because i'm trying to explain something i don't know if you can understand you see let me tell this is why many great people are persecuted in the church because we don't know how to keep quiet success is already loud on itself if you dare rub it in members all and sundry will get back at you and they will find a reason to get back at you let me tell you something it is difficult to criticize a humble man even if you are right humility paralyzes you you what will you now say are we together i'm saying this because we are in a very prophetic season where god is lifting many of us many people are not humble they are only broke by the time the blessings of the lord comes you will see the attitude the pungency of pride pride is one thing that is a destroyer even if you kill satan and all the demons proud people will still die there is nothing that gives me beauty and glory as the world shining the light on me then i hold the light and shine it i'm proud to be the usher shining it to say people thank god for joshua selman and everything that's why you notice every time people want to celebrate me for anything i become uncomfortable when i'm preaching i can be bold i can be this if i drop this mic now and he starts saying well there is a man here that thing shade was doing you see that i felt like dying if i had my way i would just send my picture to stand and represent me but some of you you like it as joking as it is some of you as you are sitting you are, ah, let my month come if they give me this opportunity i will first cut the cake and leave back the knife let them snap me alone before everybody comes the urge the urge the urge to outshine huh in in a in a secular business way that's all right but in a kingdom way the the urge to want to just receive vain glory please you must trust god to conquer it conquer it conquer it it's one of the big restraints that many of us may face you know many times i pray for you sincerely i do and i ask the lord i say lord continue to bless and lift my people i'm a, among the many things i get impressions of in my spirit is their tendencies god doesn't directly say pride tendencies vulnerabilities things that can happen that you are not aware of if you ever think money does not have power think again did you hear what i said think again money has power Put money in a ring with any boxer it will beat him out before he enters money is powerful anything that can turn a man around without using sword is powerful anything that can relocate a man without advice is powerful money is powerful but when it begins to come with it it will solve other problems and create others 
Can you let Jesus be seen in your life? Can you be lifted? That 10 million naira just entered your account and you still come for koinonia and just sit down. Not to say, if you push me, if you push me, if you push me, please, I don't have time for thieves now. What happened? God has blessed me. You're laughing. But these are the things that are enshrined in our hearts. So that they will know I'm a big man. So that they will know I'm rich. Well, for your information, that Jeep you are seeing is my car. For your information, just to let you know that uh, I'll be in UK on Tuesday. Quickly touch the US Thursday and I'll try to make coin on you. I'm still coming. God is watching all those things. It's not a testimony you are sharing. There are many things that are not testimonies. Testimonies, the goal of testimonies is edification, not announcement, edification. So the part you stress in a testimony is the edification. Truly, let me tell you something. I vowed a vow to God. And I said, Lord, whatever you will give me that will make me proud, I'm praying in advance, no matter how I cry, don't answer me. Don't answer me. Humility is a powerful thing. Can you have access and still be humble? Can you have increase and still stay humble? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't say we are like that in our family. It means all of you need to hear this message. It doesn't mean you are right just because everybody is like that. We are like that. If we have it, we show it. If we don't have it, we don't show it. But it ought not to be so. Jesus is teaching. When you come into the kingdom, you don't come with the baggages of your belief. You drop it aside and adopt the value system of the kingdom. There is nothing as powerful as being blessed and being humble. Your life is a message in action. In action. And it's amazing that many people what you call wealth is not wealth it's just a test 1.5 and people are in trouble 1.5 entered my account i have 1.5 million oh well now it has gone back to 1.4 i use hundred thousand and while you are talking you may believe you are impressing everybody whereas scattered among you there are accounts that if you see you will not wake up again you will not wake up I'm telling you, it's not the, you, there are some things you act like you are used to seeing. No, there are things you are not used to seeing. You will see things that you will not know what part of your body to react with. And yet, people can have those things and be quiet. Moses had the ability to prophesy from morning till night. The grace of the prophetic was so much in him, yet Moses was quiet. Part of his spirit was taken out. They called elders who had followed him. 70 people received the spirit of Moses. Nobody could keep quiet. Ah, I thus hear the Lord from morning till night. And Moses was watching them. Moses said, this thing that is making you make noise, times 10 of it is what was in me, yet I was quiet. Can you have so much and be quiet? Can you know so much and be quiet? There are people, if you know so much, when someone is talking once, is wrong. Let me correct you, sorry. That's what I studied. No, no, that's my field. I won't keep quiet. It is powerful to know so much. There are times that I listen to people as they talk. And many times what they are saying doesn't make a lot of sense. Spiritually and even intellectually. I know a lot more than what they are saying. But I honor them because they have more results than me. I keep quiet and I just hear. You understand what I'm saying? I say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what the man is saying is, is, is quite honestly nonsense. And I just keep quiet and I listen. He say, ah. And sometimes they are, they are flattered. They are impressed because of the whole thing. Just listen and say, yes, sir. And keep quiet. Not, sir. With all due respect, I don't want to talk quiet. We're just keeping quiet. But, Sakai, this your thing is outdated. No. You lose many opportunities like that. In the name of Jesus, may this ministry even with the things that God is doing, bring people who are exceptionally blessed and humbled. That a time will come when people will pack cars, 
that if you want to see it you only come for koinonia and you will not even know who is who people will just be rolling rolling on the ground it's after the grace you will just see a tiny lady say let me rush home you will think she's calling a bike man and she will enter a car that was your dream that you planned to buy in 30 years and you say that's the owner i said that's the owner that lady is a ceo of something he said was she not the one rolling up and down that's a message koinonia extended extended through your life don't brag around and move around making noise i have this i have that listen when you are under pressure to keep saying things it's a sign that you have complex yourself you must be healed be strengthened when god blesses you you cannot hide light we are going to pray our time is up but we must take two or three minutes to pray more than having things these are the things you must become and your life becomes exceptional lord take away my tendencies take away my vulnerabilities take away the things that can happen to me when i rise to certain levels i desire you to take me to certain levels of blessings but lord i know that there are things that are enshrined within my heart that will will limit your workings in my life is someone praying tonight lift your voice and pray tonight's teaching may be a hard teaching but pray is a maker of great people pray i owe everything to you oh god all that i am and all that i will ever become let it be unto you let the name of jesus alone be glorified alone be glorified when men see me may they see you may men not look at me and forget about you may men not look at my results and ignore jesus that when men see my life it will remind them of who god is is someone praying tonight hallelujah the last prayer point because of our time please i want you to pray this with all your heart pray and say lord don't restrain your hand from me i am trustworthy you can trust me with the wealth of the kingdom you can trust me with access you can trust me with influence i will not bring your name i will not bring reproach to your name through the pungency of pride that will come out i will let men know no matter how you lift me i will let men know that jesus is the reason for who and what i am unashamedly consistently intentionally but lord do not withhold your hand of blessings in this season you are lifting men lift me do not withhold new wines from coming upon my life Pray for yourself. Pray for Koinonia. Let it please you, O oh God, to trust me with everything you are pouring in this season. Wisdom, grace, lifting, anointings, access, everything. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In one minute, please hold the hands of somebody close to you. We are going to pray for Koinonia as a ministry. Lord, as you lift us, you are giving us a voice across this nation. You are giving us a voice. Many of you have seen the mighty things that God is doing in and through this ministry. God has made our song a praise to the nations. And God has so exalted himself. I'd like you to pray pray and say lord as you lift us we declare that never will there come a time in this ministry where men will see your walkings and forget about jesus lift your voice you love this ministry pray pray online continue the lifting oh god let the teachings continue to transform men let it enter the hands of people we declare it's a vow and a covenant that jesus and him alone will be glorified 
as you announce us as you lift us as you honor us in the name of Jesus we decree and declare pray for everyone connected to this ministry pray for every business pray for every career pray for every achievement and every achiever pray for every business person pray for every ministry connected to this ministry pray for our children father we declare that in this season that you are announcing and lifting men Jesus alone will be glorified hallelujah I pray for you that the things that I share tonight will mean a lot to you if it is lifting in the kingdom you truly desire please when these messages are uploaded get them again and sit down don't say they are simple these are the weightier matters of the kingdom you settle down and listen and pray personally this prayer point you should go back to your secret place and develop it and cry and say lord help me i have defaulted in this area and that area it may be why you're outstretched and you started but something restrained your hand now i know it's not just demons let the heavens be open pour out increase pour out influence i told god as far as my life is concerned please don't have any fear blessing me don't have any restraint blessing me because for as long as i'm alive breathing i will ensure that in and through my life that jesus is glorified you must adopt that you come from families that like to know who is doing what so that you earn respect you must kill that spirit don't say i'm yoruba don't say i'm Igbo. don't say i'm south south don't say i'm hausa don't say i'm middle belt throw away those things and say i'm a citizen of the kingdom and i must subscribe to the way that kingdom people behave they say this is what you should do but i say this is jesus teaching they say this is what you should do but i say this is the way father i stand representing this ministry and representing the things that you are doing even in this nation and around the world i know that in this season you are truly looking for men you can trust and lord you have put it in my heart as a burden to teach your people the spiritual traits that we must inculcate that position us to be lifted in our places of work in ministry in business in career and even in destiny i have shared some of these truths with your people and i cry by the god of heaven that you will cause this word to be effectual in our hearts whatever it is that our lives have projected that have made you restrain your hand of blessing your hand of lifting your hand of honor we pray tonight by the mercies of the god of heaven let your hand be outstretched once again to lift to bless to anoint and to take us to realms unimagined in the name of jesus i pray specifically over the issue of finances we're in a season where so many people need the hand of god in this area I've told you it's a cost to chase money, look for money. It will distract you and take away useful time from your life. I pray that any of these things that you have assumed in your heart that will make God to restrain his hand to bless you or bless your family by the mercies of the God of heaven, may mercy be shown you this night. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for you sincerely and truthfully may you step into blessings and into realms you never even imagined you will step into may you step into anointings may you step into access may you step into honor may you step into influence may you step into open doors in the name of jesus christ i declare may kings entreat your favor in the name of jesus that even the blessed will call you blessed the anointed will call you anointed in the name of Jesus Christ everything that represents shame and reproach in your life and in your family I stand right now in the name of Jesus and I declare that it leaves your life like smoke before the wind 
whatever God has given you that is becoming a cause in your life right now, I interject with the mercy of God and I pray that nothing God has given you will be to your heart. Nothing God has given you will be to the heart of those around you. When God is finding people to lift in this season, may he find you. When God is finding people, looking for people to honor me, he find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Give Jesus praise. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.